Hey everybody, welcome to the Huntington Center for the 2023-24 edition of Toledo Walleye Hockey. Now tonight's matchup features the visiting Fort Wayne Comets and your Toledo Walleye. And now let's send it on down to the Zamboni Tunnel to your in arena host, Sarah Sanchez. Hey fans, take a look up in the sky. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Super Spike. He's piloted tonight by the Eugene F. Kranz Toledo Express Airport. Tonight, Super Spike is dropping Swamp Shop coupons. Fans, please keep your hands out of reach of the flying Spike blimp. Do not reach over the railings and his Spike flies really low. Please do not try to touch him. We care about our... And welcome to the Huntington Center on this Sunday evening. 
As the Toledo Walleye are back in action, it's the third consecutive game between these two. The Toledo Walleye playing host to the Fort Wayne Comets. And why wouldn't they wrap up this 3-3 three and three weekend? Glad to have you along, everyone. Matt Melzack alongside one-time Toledo Walleye defenseman, also one-time Fort Wayne Comet. Yes, that is true. Simone back in the glory Denny. Days. Yeah, <laughs> way back at the beginning of your career, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, it, years ago, years ago. Uh, it's great to have you back here Absolutely. at the end of this 3-3 three and three weekend, which has been very exciting. A, because Toledo's won the first two, and B, the way they've done it Absolutely. for each of the first two games, being down multiple goals in mm -hmm. each game and still finding ways to win. You know, we talked about last week. That's the, uh, that's the chemistry you want to have that adversity and to be able to make those comebacks. Last night being down 4-1 after one on home ice, it's never how you want it to be early on in the year, but you know what? The guys had that resiliency. Those shorthanded goals get you going just like that. The Wally take the game. Seen a lot of games yeah. over, uh, you know, your playing career, uh, over my broadcasting mm -hmm. career. There's not too many where you're down three at one point and win by three. It's very, it's very, very rare. rare. Very rare. Uh, hey. Take them however they come, right? Uh, that's right. <laughs> it's a victory for the Toledo Wall. We'll see if they can make it three in a row for Fort Wayne coming up in just a little bit. Right now, let's uh, welcome in for our Pro Medica Sports Medicine Institute injury report. And it is head athletic trainer Brad Frederick who uh, joins us just outside the locker room right now. And Brad, uh, uh, well, we're you know, kind of talking about, you know, obviously trying to win three in a row here this weekend. It's the same lineup outside of a goaltender change for today for Toledo. So that's really good news for this team, right? Some three nights, first one we've had all season. Guys are definitely banged up. It's been a physical couple games with Fort Wayne, and, you know, the guys are tough. They're ready to go, and, you know, that's a credit to them working out all summer. It's, it's the work that Jonesy's doing with them off the ice and then exactly how hard they've been working on the ice as well. And it's that first three and three of the year, so we'll see how the players respond today, right? Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll get them going. They're excited to play and, you know, get through this one and, and beat the rivals again one more time. So. <laughs> I, I like the way he's thinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fired up today, Brad. In, Appreciate it as post, always. He's in mid-season form right He is there. in mid-season <laughs> form, and it's only November. A yeah, long way true. to go. Yeah. But wait till we see him in January. That's true. You know, when oh, you're boy. full mid-season form. Yeah, and then he's half asleep. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa, whoa. Game wow. two for Simone, hey, and he's throwing something at you right yeah. away, Brad. Just getting comfortable, you know? That's yeah. all it is. I love it. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate it as always. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. We'll talk again coming up uh, this week. All right. So, Simone, let's go to the highlights from last night right here at the Huntington Center. And that's what we were talking about. You just mentioned it. Down 4 1. Fort Wayne gets a. Gets a nice bounce here, one that was so close to Jan Bednar being able to cover, he couldn't, and it ends up being a goal. Then Sean Sidlowski, he's done this a few times against the Walleye yeah. over the years. No, he absolutely has. You know, that goal right there by Will Cullen on the PP got a little bit of momentum back to make it a 2-1 game, but, you know, when you give up two goals in the minute following that, that's never what you want to see. Obviously, they scored 12 seconds after that right there off the faceoff, and then proceeded by about 30 seconds after that, so going down 4-1 after the first period. You knew the walleye were going to come out with something in the second. They obviously did. Yeah, well, they did because of the fact that their their PK was excellent last night because for a while there, Fort Wayne was doing what they needed to do, and that was keep it at 4-1 until that play right there. And Francois Brassard probably rethinking that about halfway out. Yep. Oh, no, what am I doing? Yeah, I think you got to think he panicked a little bit on that one. Obviously, Colin Keenan did a great job of skating full speed down the ice to get to Sam Craggs. And right there, you see Sam Craggs' two shorthanded goals. Not something you see every day, but with the way that guy's playing, it's no surprise. Yeah, no surprise at all. And then in the third period, Jan Bednar had a couple of really dynamite saves, including this one. Nearly a bad break. He uses his glove, his helmet, the post, all of them to make the stop, and then Chase Greesock there on the power play for Toledo. You know, just like we talked about last game, it's special team battle right there, and that's what's important. And you know what? With the way the walleye have been playing this season, it's huge. And who else but Brandon Hawkins to go ahead and give the walleye that 5-4 lead. Yeah, went with a big slap shot, blew it right through Broussard. Next thing you know, Toledo, at, well, you know what? He could score from the other end of the ice, too. <laughs> Brandon Hawkins, he does. Empty netter. Toledo would add one more from Conlon Keenan. His third consecutive game with a goal. He and Sam Craggs have both done that, where Brandon Hawkins is at five straight games with a goal mm -hmm. going into play today. So those guys have been red hot, mm -hmm. lighting the lamp right now. And this team's lighting it up pretty well. They're averaging five and a half goals a game here in the early season. It's That's very, very impressive. And they've scored 21 against Fort Wayne in three games. That's 
I mean, that's what you want, right? If you can score 20 goals in three games, then you've got a pretty good chance to win. Yeah, Toledo 3-0 and right now against Fort Wayne. Off to an excellent start. 5-0-1 in their first six games. And three straight home wins to start the year mm -hmm. as well. The record, by the way, is seven straight for the Toledo Walleye to start wow. a season on home wow. ice. That was... Uh, back a few years, I think it was 2017. Okay, as, uh, I was there when they good did times. it. You were. It was good times. <laughs> yeah, good times back then. All right, stay with us when we come back here to the Huntington Center in downtown Toledo. We'll get the thoughts of head coach Pat Mickish. That is coming up next. We'll also look at our goaltender matchup. Get you ready for this game today. It is the Toledo Walleye, the Fort Wayne Comets, the end of a three and three against these two rivals, and we'll have that coming up. This is Toledo Walleye hockey. Sounds about right. Yep. And back here at the Huntington Center in downtown Toledo, Walleye and Fort Wayne Comets. Uh, another time this week, and these two teams will play 13 times this year, so we still got a lot of hockey yet. Yeah. Yeah, they, this is just what, number four of 13. So, I mean, nine more appearances, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And you were, you've been part of that mm -hmm. where these two teams will play each other a boatload, and they should. Yep. They're an Absolutely. hour and 50 minutes apart. You yep. should be playing them Absolutely. Uh, a lot, and they will over the course of this season. Let's get to our Thompson side scoop of the game and catch the thoughts of uh, head coach Pat Mickish. We had to start, of course, with the wild win last night. Well, it didn't look good after one period, but, boy, it certainly changed the rest of the game, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, not the start you want. I mean, a couple of breakdowns off of face-offs uh, in the first period, a couple of missed assignments on some back checks, and against a good team like that that we, we know they transition well, you're going to pay a price. What really changed? Was it the shorthanded goals? Is that what really turned that around Yes. Well, I thought we started to do other things the right way, first of all, and so we got some emotion into it and got the team, the bench involved, and then, but, but for sure, you know, the two shorthanded goals were the changing point just to, put a lot more belief in our bench. You mentioned last night after the game, you, you wanted to talk about the fans a little bit too, that that emphasis and extra energy that they gave you. Yeah, I mean, it was constant. And I, I think the way we ended that second period and then came out for the third period, and, you know, there was a little bit of back and forth there, and but the fans were going and going, and then, you know, we took advantage of our opportunities late in that game and then closed it out. 
How do you approach today's game, that final one of the three and three? Well, I mean, this time of the year, it's 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 not a playoff series, but it can still have that same type of mentality where you've got to be ready to go again and, and repeat against the same type of team. So, you know, for us, it's we have to figure out a way to come out of our locker room and have a better first period. And that has been the thing. If you were to look at mm -hmm. kind of nitpick, I mean, Toledo 5 0 one in their first mm -hmm. six games. There's not a lot you're going to go, oh, this needs a change, this right. needs a change. However, if you were to look at something, they scored first only one time in those six yeah. games. That was the first game of the year, the one yeah. they lost in overtime in Kalamazoo. to Kalamazoo. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that, that would be the one thing is starting better. You heard him uh, mention mm. it right there. For sure. Comebacks are great. But, I mean, the last thing you want to have to do is come back every single game. And at a certain point, it's going to come back to bite you. So you really want to see the walleye come out tonight with a big first period, get that first goal give themselves a cushion with John Lethman in the pipes and do whatever it takes to win this hockey game. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you get, as you know, when you get into the playoff time, you love to have the lead. You that do. first goal is very important. It's huge. Playing in front, is, it allows you to be a little more comfortable. Everybody kind of grips the sticks a little bit less. And on top of that, like Coach said there, the fan base in this arena can make all the difference there. They can bring that energy and provide it. And when the players need that boost, that's what they're here for. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be another great night. Well, it has been something because the first three games here at the Huntington Center all have been over 8,000 wow. as far as attendance. Wow. That's pretty impressive Truly in its it own right. All right, let's take a look right now at our Habitat Security goaltender matchup. Let's show you who's going to be between the pipes. You mentioned John Lefferman. He will get the start. He played Friday night in Fort Wayne, the 6-4 win. 299 goals against average 875 save. Two and one record, that one loss being in overtime, so 2-0-1. Oh, he still only has one regulation loss as a Toledo walleye goaltender. That was a first yeah. start uh, last year, <laughs> December in Fort in, uh, Wheeling. Wow, that's uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. There's a reason he was named goaltender of the year in the ECHL last season. He's truly an AHL, NHL quality goaltender, and we're, the Toledo Walleye are extremely lucky to have him. Tyler Parks we saw as well on Friday, first time Toledo had seen the camp. And at 3.34 goals against average, 2-2 two two record for Tyler Parks, his save percentage at 898. So that's a look at your Habitat security, secure the net matchup. We know what you're going to get from John Lefteman. Mm -hmm. We saw it a lot last year. He was a teammate yep. of you uh, last year. And, and you feel very comfortable when he's in the net, right? Absolutely do, yeah. You know he's going to be there behind for the times when there are mistakes. Like Coach said, you want to avoid those turnovers, avoid those face-off losses, whatever the case to allow, just as we want the players to get comfortable, you want the walleye to allow John Lefteman to get comfortable in that, get him, you know, clear the people out of the front, allow him to see that puck, and you know he's going to take care of business for the rest. And we've talked about it a, a lot in these games, these matchups between uh, Toledo and Fort Wayne, and we'll mention it again. They like to play the transition game. They want to get you to turn the puck over mm -hmm. at center and then go the other way. Yep. And you saw it in the first period. Toledo did give them the puck. Yeah. And it ended up working out to a 4-1 lead for the Comets. When they didn't, it changed things a lot. Exactly. And that's the way that the Fort Wayne Comets play. They strive on transition. They strive on those mistakes. And that's what the walleye want to prevent. And obviously, once the walleye started to prevent those, they were able to get on a streak there, get a number of goals. And just like that, they took away the victory. And special teams. They were a plus four last night. Yeah. Two power play goals, two short-handed goals for the Toledo Walleye. Well, we're ready for puck drop. Pretty close anyway. So stay with us. When we come back here to the Huntington Center, we'll get this game underway. A Sunday evening downtown Toledo. The Walleye hosting Fort Wayne. This is Walleye Hockey.
All right, we're back here at the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo. National Anthem just completed. And we've got a good Sunday evening crowd. Probably not going to be as big as what we have seen the previous three games, but a solid group nonetheless for this Sunday. Toledo wearing uh, the special nonprofit jerseys. That's our night tonight, nonprofit night. So uh, pretty cool jerseys. Got the, you know, city skyline on the front. Uh, you can see there with the walleye logo and then on the sleeves a list of all the nonprofits that uh, You know we have dealt with over the years so great stuff good looking Jersey They'll auction these off after we'll have more on that when we hit the intermission tonight Yeah, those are beautiful jerseys. You know what? I'm gonna be honest I don't think in my life. I ever knew there could be so many shades of blue But man does the walleye design team ever keep finding them, but what a <laughs> tremendous job They did Dan Royer and his team here and the entire uh, you know, working with the nonprofits on the design, and they absolutely knocked this one out of the park just as they always do. Yep, there you go. As we have for our first time this year, a two man referee crew. That's what you love to see. I think after last Saturday night, they maybe saw that they wanted to try it out here in Toledo, and that's what you love to, you definitely enjoy to see two referees knowing that there's going to be eyes on everything yeah, at all times. And we saw it a little bit in games last year. Now in the playoffs, it's every game, which is great. Uh, so and you need these guys working together. I, I know it's tough to fill every game for with sure. uh, double reps right now and two reps, but eventually it'll get there. For sure, yeah. I think it's a matter of time before the league gets a consistent two-man system. But like you said, the numbers aren't there. And between the number of games that are played in the season and the amount of travel that's there for not just the players but the referees, it's, it's inevitably going to happen, but it's going to take its time. Uh, early block for Conlon Keenan. Mark that down on your scorecard as two tie him. We'll hand it off. Late man in for a shot, and Parks will make the save on that opportunity there for Colin Tyson. As we're just underway, 46 seconds in to period number one. Yeah, it's a good start there. Just like we said, the wall I want to get on that rush right away. They do a good job by getting a play inside the blue, and Tutayev makes a nice play across to Tyson, and you get a shot on goal just like that. You start to get guys engaged in the game right off the bat. Yeah, so we're underway. We'll keep an eye tonight on our Forest View shots on goal counter. Brought to you by Forest View Lanes. That's the uh, first shot of the game. As the puck played up the near side wall, slips through Cullen's stick. Dugan will play it, and he'll drop it. Over to the right circle and back across to trying to find Dugan towards the front of the net. That didn't connect with him. Came off the back wall, and then... He's unable to keep control of it, being pressured by Keenan and forced all the way back into the Fort Wayne zone. Comments will jump on that. And they'll flip it down into the Toledo end. Willits uh, got there far enough for the icing call. So speaking of the two refs, Rocco Stokowiak, who was here last night as the single ref, he gets some help today with Luke Gagnon, number 13, joining him. Christopher Williams on the lines. You know him pretty yep. well. And yep. Jake Davis as well. Two we've seen a lot in this building over the last few years. Absolutely. Like we said, with the travel in this league, a lot of the times you tend to see a lot of the same linesmen. The referees rotate a little bit more, but generally the referees in the league tend to work in maybe certain divisions or certain areas where they're only driving so far. You know, a lot of these times you'll see guys, they'll have to maybe ref in Wheeling on a Saturday night or Fort Wayne, Kalamazoo, and then they'll travel here on a Sunday. So... Just as there's a lot of travel for players, there's definitely a lot for the officials as well. Yep, that is part of part of the gig, right? So it can uh, it, it's taxing, you know. You've oh, been yeah. part of it many a time as a player. You know oh, how yeah. hard it is. Absolutely, it is. Just as tired as you are from playing the game, you can't even imagine refereeing where your brain is going 24/7. Maybe when you're playing the game, you have the opportunities when you're sitting on the bench in the intermissions to kind of take that time to take a second to reset, whereas the referee has to be on for all 60 minutes. All right, so Toledo will send down Sam Craggs, Brandon Cruz, and Chase Greesock, the BG line out there, as the centering pass is blocked from Greesock. They had Craggs and Cruz right in front of the net. Greesock has it, fires a shot, parks the save. Puck goes over to the far side wall. Good check there, and it's worked out to center ice. Cormier got it to the blue line, but then couldn't get it inside the zone, so it'll be loaded up again, and another try that goes right to the side of the net. Pitch forked off to the corner. Handled there by Fort Wayne as they'll work it around near side. Played up to the line. Kelb able to keep it inside the zone. Centering pass in front. Cormier threw it right uh, through the crease, and it comes over to the near side wall. 
Played along the board, Beraldo in a battle there. Down he went, but managed to get the puck off to Grisak. And there's room for him to get it to center ice. He'll get to the red line, lift it in. Two and a half gone in the opening period. Scoreless on a Sunday evening against the Fort Wayne Commons. Good physical start to this game by both teams. Obviously, like we said, this is the end of a 3-3 three and three against the same team of the Walleye six games. This is now the fourth one against the Fort Wayne Comets. So you know between the rivalry and everything that this is going to be a physical game. And it's safe to say it is not disappointed off the bat. By the way, these two teams will play on Saturday coming up next weekend in Fort Wayne. <laughs> Just can't avoid each other. No. <laughs> now, you know, we mentioned it. You're an hour 50 away. You're going to see a lot of the same opponent same thing with Kalamazoo playing them a bunch mm -hmm. as, as always over the course of the year still have what 12 more games against the Kalamazoo wings yet so yeah Kalamazoo Cincy another one yep. uh, wheeling, yeah, you definitely wheeling see. actually you don't see as much this year surprisingly I believe it's only uh, what uh, five times this year against okay. Wheeling. kind of okay yeah, you know, a little, a little less. Two here and three there. Okay, well year. that's not so bad then. But yeah. I mean, that's that's a little further trip. But like you said, when you get Fort Wayne being so close and Kalamazoo as well, yep. it's inevitable that you'll see them a lot. And Wheeling's the furthest one at four hours, so you're, yeah. you know, you're keeping to within that group. Mm -hmm. But Wheeling, they're the closest opponent, I think, for Reading right now. So they got to see Reading a whole bunch. Yes. yes, even though that's they're not right. in the same conference. Yeah, not the same conference, everything. But they still see them, I believe, nine times this year. As Parks comes out, he nearly handed it off to Cullen, who was racing up. Nice pickoff at center by Bliss. He tries to go across. Had a complete Sentazo for a moment, but a good bat check will knock it away as Vulcan gets it out to center ice. And at the red line, Sentazo will flip it deep. Long pass ahead. One thing that Toledo has done very well against Fort Wayne is shoot the puck in three games they have 125 shots on goal an average of just over 40 a game against the fort wayne commons wow what an absolute number right there that's incredible especially considering the walleye are averaging 37.3 shots they've truly found the net as much as they can and that's obviously what's leading to goals against the fort wayne commons so yeah, far yes they have a nine goal game and a seven goal game already against fort wayne that's for and a six wow uh, you know <laughs> forget the other one too Dao centering pass in front and Linden tonight as he got loose and a save Tor Linden getting a good look but right there John Letheman first Toledo side yeah you see a good opportunity there by Jake Willits obviously like we said Tyler Parks getting himself into the game but just like that John Letheman does a great job like we talked about in the pregame show He's that backbone you need. You allow him to get a little bit comfortable five minutes into this game here. But just like that, on the first shot, it's a breakaway opportunity, and he makes a great save. Face off to the left of Letheman. On the draw, Gabriel pick it up, and Greasock high flip out. That'll slide down into the Fort Wayne zone. And it's steered for McCourt. Handed it off there. Cruz a tip ahead. Coming across the line is Craggs. He'll fire a shot. Parks with a right pad save. It comes loose. Grease sock a chance, and he missed that one just wide of the net. Dao down in the corner. He lost it. Goes behind the net. Centering pass, and that one is picked off by Linden, who will play it out. Sedlowski battling Crags. Longtime vet, Sean Sedlowski. Yep, that's a guy who's been here for a number of years. Last year when he was out in Orlando, it was, I think, as a as a player who's been here for a number of years, it was weird to see him not be a part of it. Bliss, shot right on, save, rebound, Greasock. And he couldn't tuck it in. Parks was able to hang on there to make another stop. Well, there's been one really good chance from Fort Wayne, the Linden uh, chance on John Letheman. Otherwise, Toledo's had the better of the scoring opportunities through the first six minutes. Oh, they absolutely have. Both goaltenders making some big saves right off the hop. Like you said, the walleye creating more chances, but both goalies so far have come to play. Sentazo, nice flip on the backhand. It sets it up for Anderson. He tried to go backhand. It went high and wide. Stepping up, holding it in. It goes to Hawkins. Sharp angle try. <laughs> and from the goal line, he tries. And why not? Tyson, you, you goes, never know. Goes rink wide. They'll throw it in front, and Parks with a block with Hawkins right at the side of the net. If that gets through, it's a slam dunk for number 16. 
Yeah, it was a good looking pass right there to make the attempt to Hawkins on the back door. And a timeout on the ice. We'll be back to the Huntington Center in a moment. We're scoreless. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey. Fresh set of downs. All right, back here, Huntington Center, downtown Toledo. Early on, still in the first period, 13.30 to go. Matt Melzak, Simone Denny, happy to have you along with our crew today. Two more home games to go in this four-game stretch. That includes Wednesday morning game. Jordan Strack will join me for that broadcast, 10.30 start. So when you're out and about, you can you know, tune in to us. And then on uh, Friday night, you'll be back in the booth mm -hmm. for that one. Looking Absolutely. forward to it. Absolutely. As Toledo be matching up Kalamazoo after seeing Wheeling for the first time this year in the morning game. Coming up on Wednesday, Wheeling as uh, uh, right now right behind Toledo by a point in the standings. They've played one more game so far. Yeah, Too it's a nice. It's a nice start for the Wheeling Nailers there. Yeah, they got a good team from what I've heard. To tie him. We'll play it in behind the net. Tyson has it there. He'll center it and it missed. Keenan was right in front of the net, but was tied up there and a puck will slide all the way back down. 5-1 on our Forest View shots on goal counter. Favor the Toledo Walnut. Stark contrast to the starts we've seen the previous two nights where it's been Fort Wayne who's come out very electric both nights. As yep. it's a hand pass going to be whistled down here against the Comets. Yeah, that's what you want to see out of the Toledo Walleye here. Seven and a half minutes into this first period. Five shots on goal. That's a great start right there. Like you said, a sharp contrast from the past couple nights. Now you want to see them get that first goal here in that first period. Preferably, obviously, sometime here in the next few minutes so you can kind of get rolling and look to get that second one in this first period. Well, a reminder, Walleye Hockey brought to you by One Accurate Limo, Premier Limo Service in Toledo. Limo, uh, shuttle buses, party buses, but most importantly, airport transfers. Easy way to get up the DTW and back for your trip. Check them out at a1accuratelimo.com or book online. And there, and call 419-725-LIMO. Offside call going against Fort Wayne, which means a face-off just outside at Toledo Blue Line. Toledo doing a good job clogging those blue lines there. Both defensemen so far, I would say, have done a really good job of blocking that blue line and not allowing easy entries into the zone. Jake Willett's doing a good job on standing up on that previous one, forcing the offside. McKell with a nice job to keep it inside the zone for Fort Wayne. They don't get a scoring opportunity because Toledo's going the other way. Little drop as Cruz coming across the line. He'll leave it. Over it goes to Beraldo. Down low in the offensive zone, Adrian Beraldo. His way to Lewandowski, he'll fire a shot. That went wide of the net. Racing over his Willets, but he's unable to hold it in. And then he tried to pass it back across. Peraldo's got to hurry. Dugan getting across the line. He'll drop it down into the corner. Wedman will pick that up. Wedman drops. And Haas will go in behind the net. Haas still with a puck. Right-hander drops it off there. So they'll work it around. Wedman played it back to no one. And it'll slide all the way down the ice. Yep, just like that, the physical contact continues. Good job by Lewandowski getting a good hit on Dugan there. And Dugan maybe didn't like that one so much, but that's the physical play that's going to happen tonight. As we're at the end of a three in three, luckily not a lot of travel. I mean, basically both teams getting short travel. Gabriel for Hawkins, back for Gabriel, and it just slipped past his stick. Hawkins going to pick it up again. He'll look from the corner. 
Into the left circle he goes, sends it across. Gabriel wanted to go back to Hawkins. It hit Bliss. Trying to sneak it, I think, through Hawkins. That's where he was going, right? Yeah, no, that's where he was looking. You can see Hawkins starting to creep up to that top of the circle area. He was looking for, I would assume, that one-time shot. But it was a good little play by the Fort Wayne defenseman there to block that in the middle. Long pass out to center. Linden gets across the line. He's tied up. Gabriel will knock it away from him. Riley McCord will play it up the near side. Plenty of room for Tutaya. He's looking things over. Fires a pass that actually hit Keenan. And drop down for Linden to play back inside the zone. Near side, he got the steal, Linden, and tried to tuck it in front. John Letheman, alert, ready, knocked it down and covered it up. John Letheman on his game here 10 minutes into this first period. Just the second save he's seen so far, but those are sometimes the times where as a goaltender you kind of get into a bit of a lull where you're kind of not seeing many shots and whatnot, and you got to be ready, and obviously... As always, no surprise, John Letheman, such a consummate professional, ready to make that save, right on his angle on the post there, and does a great job following the uh, puck across the net there. Talked to so many goaltenders in my career, Simone, they've all echoed that. They'd rather see 40 or 50 shots. You want to keep touching the puck. Absolutely. As a goaltender, <laughs> it's, a, it's a routine, right? The more you get into that rhythm, the better you're going to continue to play and see those pucks. And Yeah, I mean, as a defenseman, as a forwards, your goal is to give up the least amount of shots, but... <laughs> Safe to say the goaltender's usually not upset if you give them not such quality shots, but a large number of them. Greesock trying to send it in front. He thought he was interfered with. Puck has lifted the length, and an icing call coming against Fort Wayne. And we'll take a look at maybe that last play a moment ago. Wheeling in action today, by the way. Uh, they're trailing Idaho, second period, three to two. There's a look at Pat Mickish behind the bench. Yeah, Pat really doing a good job so far to start the season. Like we said, that 4-0-1 starts fantastic. Guys are listening, guys are playing for him, and it's love, you uh, You absolutely love to see that at the start with a brand new coach. Yeah, shot by Lewandowski is a save for Parks. Penalty call coming as Tyson was dropped right in front of the net. That could be where the penalty call occurred. Cullen will send it to Tyson. He'll drop it off Lewandowski, and then it's touched up by Cormier, and we'll get the whistle, and we're going to get the penalty call. It's a high stick going against the Comets. Now Toledo's going to get the first power play of the game, and we'll get that power play when we return to the Huntington Center. We're scoreless, Toledo and Fort Wayne on this Sunday. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey. All right, Toledo going to go to the power play. As in the box for the Fort Wayne Comets is Joe Gattenby, the defenseman. He's in. And so Toledo to the man advantage. Yeah, Toledo's power play running at 29.6% so far this season. First in the ECHL. Even though they were held the other night without a goal, like we said last night, that special teams battle truly won them that hockey game. So you hope to see the same tonight. As to Tayev, has it just outside the left circle. He'll take it down into the corner. Plays it in behind the net. Bliss wanted to sweep it for Hawks. Uh, Brandon Hawkins, and instead it goes to Sentazzo. He scores! Oren Sentazzo makes it 1-0 with a power play goal. There comes the giant walleye flying down from the stands. Oren Santazo was a beautiful shot right there in the slot. 
The walleye tried that play right from behind the net there, where it goes um, behind the net, right up to Hawkins for the one-timer, not there. Hawkins does a good job to get it down there, but what a pass by Trenton Bliss. Right to Sintazo, and he makes no mistake putting it far post and in. Now only the second time this year Toledo has scored first in a game. Yeah, we talked about that right in that pregame show there, how important it was going to be tonight to get right off the hop there. And great job by them, obviously now having seven shots, but getting that first goal is huge. And they're right after it again, racing to the front of the net was Tyson, and it wouldn't go. Tyson will try again from between the circles, center right to the front of the net. That'll be steered aside by Parks. Well, it's all, as we mentioned, only the second time they've scored first. Their record is 0-0-1. They lost in overtime to Kalamazoo, the other game that they scored first in. And we're going to be guilty of a icing call here, the Toledo Walleye. So that will bring a faceoff back in the end to our left. Four as few shots on goal counter right now. Toledo 9, Fort Wayne 1. Yeah, that's the start you're looking for. I mean, when you're almost, you're over halfway through this first period, you make no mistake that the Walleye have created a lot of pressure there on Tyler Parks, and, you know, they haven't been able to necessarily beat him there with the first seven, but just like that, Santazo buries it behind him. Right after that, beautiful play there by Keenan over to Tyson, and a good opportunity there, but a great save by Parks, and the Walleye just continue to keep that pressure on there, and you, like we said, holding the Fort Wayne Comets to one shot, you gotta be happy if you're Coach Pack Mickish. I'll tell you what, Oren Sentazo, we've talked about him already. Last year in Newfoundland, 46 points in 39 games, including 21 goals for Oren Sentazo. Yeah, you can see the way the way Oren plays. He's such a skilled player out there. His, his hands, his shot, you can tell he's just got that, that gift to him, that talent level, but the work ethic is truly there. And the connection that he's had so far this season with Hawkins and Bliss is clearly showing, and... You love to see that success come for him and for the walleye. Now with that, Toledo, this one nothing lead, power play goal. One for one with a man advantage tonight for that number one power play unit. As it's raced out to center ice, Speraldo will flip it deep. Wedman goes behind his own net, carries it up towards center. He'll slide to the neutral zone, fires a shot right on. And saving it from center is left them in, and then Beraldo in a little bit of a shoving match here after the whistle with Wedman. Uh, you know exactly what was happening there. As soon as that player stopped in front of the net, the Fort Wayne guy was just going ahead and trying to stop in the crease just to kind of let John Lethman in the wall. I know he was there, and Adrian Beraldo never, ever will allow anyone to take any jeopardy of his teammates. So you love to see him standing up for his goaltender right there. Yeah, he just... No hesitation, Adrian Beraldo. Well, Toledo, uh, this is kind of an odd stat. I mean, it's very early. This could obviously change a lot over the course of the year. We don't know if this is how the team will be all season, but averaging 17 and a half penalty minutes a game, that's fifth in the league. Fifth yeah, most. That's, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's not something you ever see. I mean, Adrian Beraldo leading the walleye with 24 penalty minutes this season. Never worried and never afraid to take uh, take a fight and do whatever it takes to be a tough customer out there. Shot by Cullen there was blocked in front of the net. Dao bringing it back goes across Cormier, but a whistle there and an offside call going against Fort Wayne after the Comets tried to carry it inside the zone. 7.42 to go here in the opening period. Let's look at some of the crowd here today at the Huntington Center. Uh, the fans, fans in this arena truly never seem to amaze anybody in this walleye organization. I think every single game you come here, you're just so proud to play for such a great team that has such a loyal fan base. And whether it's a Friday night or a Sunday night, you know the fans are truly going to come and support this hockey team. Yeah, all year long, no matter, no matter when. As it's worked out to center ice by Fort Wayne, they'll get it across the Toledo line. Nice move, Gorniak got to the front of the net. A stop by Leatherman. Nice, some good speed. He has showcased that. The wheels, Jack Gorniak, he can motor for Fort Wayne. Has the puck brought back by McCord. He'll fire a shot right on. Parks bobbled it a bit, came free over to the left circle. Bliss, a big wind up and a shot that didn't get to the front of the net. Gabriel trying to step up to hold it in, but it's out the center. And Gorniak trying to get control of it. Then Kelb overskated as well. Cruz will pick it up. Sets up Lewandowski coming down the near side wall. He's bumped off the puck and it's lifted out. Under seven to go in the opening period. Toledo's going to be uh, 
Well, it would have been a late offside call. Nope, they're going to whistle at icing here, so. And Toledo won't be able to get their full line change on that they were trying to do. Great save there by John Lethman. Just the third shot of this period for the Fort Wayne Comets in almost 15 minutes there. Like we were saying there, Jack Borniak with a great opportunity as he came down, just slicing through the defense. A great move, looking for his first goal of the year, but John Lethman came right prepared and with a great save there. Yeah, we were talking about speed guys a little bit. Norin Santazo certainly brings that. And uh, Jack Gorniak on the other side, he can he can motor, and we just saw it right there. Whistle here, and that'll allow Toledo to get their completion of the line chain. Get the best possible bone joint muscle care. ProMedic Orthopedics, stop hurting, start living. Learn more, promedica.org slash ortho. Not something you see every day there. The puck flipped right into the back of uh, Dugan's pants there, and it got stuck, so they were able to blow it down and allow the walleye to get that change. Johnson, center right in front. Oh, he had a good look. Right at the front of the cage there is wide open was Dau, but he couldn't get a stick on it. Centering pass comes across. Another shot blocked. Puck loose side of the net. Beraldo trying to find it. It was in his skates for a moment. Worked up the far side wall. Hawkins will bring it around near side. Bernard able to keep it in. Lethman steers that aside on the shot that he saw all the way in. Puck loose side of the net. Willits able to pick it up. And he'll get Hawkins, who sets up Bliss, riding through the neutral zone. Trying to backhand feed Hawkins. He had slowed down a bit, but Brandon will still get a look at it. Plays it up to the line. Fresh off the bench. It's kept inside the zone by Anderson. Centering pass blocked. And Alexis Daou will get it to center ice. Wedman will chase for Fort Wayne. Bulls his way in behind the net. Wheels fires it right to the side of the cage. May have been a stop there for Lethman or it hit the outside of the net. Bernard. Plays a rink wide. Haas with a shot. That went off the back wall. Anderson trying to chase after it. It's poked loose there and a chance for Will Cullen to take. Five and a half to go. Opening period. Is it set up for Tutayev? Tutayev winding up. A real Tutayev coming across the line. He'll get in behind the net. Still with a puck. Takes it up towards the blue line. Dropped it off there. It's stumped down to the left circle. Played by Tyson. Tyson will hand it off. Keenan. Going behind the net, Conlon Keenan swings it up to the blue line to Cullen. Cullen will hand it off to Taya. Back to Cullen, top of the right circle. He'll come down the wall, brings it and plays it in behind the net. Centering pass, Keenan block. Came up to the blue line, held in there by Toledo. Keenan will bump, uh, bump it in behind the net. Worked up the near side wall, Cullen. Cullen has it. Peels off a check, still with a puck. Hands it back to Tyson. Tyson, left circle shot. That popped high in the air and reaching up his parks. He'll glove it. But Toledo running circles inside that Fort Wayne zone. Timeout on the ice. Back to the Huntington Center in a moment. Toledo up 1 0 on the goal by Oren Santazzo over Fort Wayne. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey. Half time? Yeah, yeah. 24 17. But the Lions had Jim Nance doing the game today. What a league, hey? I, it's 2023. It, I mean, <laughs> the Browns are coming back down 20. <laughs> I know. The Lions are a national game. After having a Monday night game, their last game. Yeah. You know what's crazy out of this, too, is the Lions should, they should realistically have 35 points. They should. That's, you're that's right. That's crazy. Eckler did end up getting the other touchdown for the Chargers. Oh, did he? Yeah. I have him on my fantasy, so I got the notification. Uh, I mean, the running back's got to have. And back here at the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo. We got a 1 0 game. Toledo Walleye are in front. The Fort Wayne Comets as Brandon Cruz sends it in front. Off the draw, and Sam Craggs, who's been as hot as anyone. On the goal-scoring side, fired one on, but Parks the save. Yeah, really nice save there by Parks, but I mean, there is, I don't think there's anyone else on this ice than other than maybe Brandon Hawkins and whose stick you want that going on. Sam Craig's on a, currently on a three-game goal streak, including two shorthanded goals last night. Such a rare feat. But man, that guy has been absolutely hot, and a beautiful pass there by Cruz Stephen Finham. And you know what? That's that Bowling Green connection right there. Three guys that have played together before in the past, they know where each other are, and 
beautiful looking play, but it was a great save by Parks. And Crags will take the draw to the right of Parks. And a faceoff won by Toledo. Gabriel handed it off. McCord gave way to Grease Sock. Backed it all the way around to Crags over in the near side corner. He's got Cruz over there with him. It's Cruz who comes up with it for Grease Sock. One timer. That went just wide. Crags will go in behind the net. Still with a puck as he plays it up towards the line. Sets it down into the corner. McCord. McCord tied up there with Haas. Coming over is Cruz. He'll grab it. He's got Gabriel in front. Doesn't throw in the pass. Finally, he will. And Gabriel tipped it, but it went over top of the net. Played back into the corner for Cruz. Back up to the line, Gabriel. Gabriel swings it over to McCord. Hands for Craggs. Back to Gabriel along the blue line. Gives way to Cruz just outside the right circle. Not a power play, even though it looks like <laughs> it. Set up. Craggs. Turn around. Shot. That hit the mid uh, right in the chest of Parks and bounced free for a chance for Haas to play. Over on the far side was Sedlowski. It's knocked off of his stick and all the way back down the ice for Dau. Walleye doing a really, really good job there of uh, gaining possession. The last line before as well, with you had Colin Tyson, Tutayev, and Keenan doing a really good job there of possessing that puck and really just carrying the play. They may only have 13 shots and only one or, excuse me, one or two in the last few minutes, but they've truly been possessing that puck in Fort Wayne's end. Love to keep control of it as long as possible as it's sent out and back into the Toledo end where Brandon Hawkins will gather it in. Hawkins to Willits, sidesteps a check, gives way to Bliss. Bliss is across the line. He's got Beraldo next to him, hands it to him. Adrian Beraldo, a shot tipped by Willits, <laughs> who had gone to the front of the net. And it goes wide, and it's brought out to center ice. Kelb coming across the line. He'll fire a shot, shoulder save. Letheman up over the glass and into the netting with 2.51 to go here in period one. Yeah, not often do you see a defenseman to defenseman right in front of the net with a deflection, but hey, when it's when you're going, you're going. Willits did a good job jumping up in the play there, and you could see as he was driving the net originally on that three on two, even though he didn't get it, he did a good job of following through, and I mean, I can't really remember to count the number of times that you had maybe a Adrian Beraldo to Jake Willits <laughs> deflection in front, but when you're going, you're going. That's right, and Toledo always active with D. As you know, you, you played here. As a defenseman, you know, yep. as an offensive defenseman. Uh, get into the play. Get after it. I, I think the last time we saw that play happen was when I was partnered with Nolan Zajac, and we had the two of us, I would say, almost as fourth and fifth forwards out there half of the game. As a shot from the line, steered away by Lethman. Chance there from the blue line. Duggan trying to hold it in. No, as it's going to be a turnover for Cullen. He'll race it to center. Hands it over to Tyev. He'll flip it deep. Anderson going to chase. Matt Anderson, the defenseman, went down low to try to get control of it. He couldn't. As it's Wedman to bring it back the other way for Fort Wayne. Into the end to our left. Wedman goes in behind the net. Takes a hit there. Vulcan trying to dig the puck out for the Comets. It will squib free. Played up the near side wall. Bernard. Bernard. Sends it rink wide to Haas. Haas with a shot tipped in front. Save Letheman. Rebound. They score. As it slides past John Letheman and into the back of the net to make it a 1 1 game. Just a bit of an unlucky bounce there. Not sure exactly what that hit off, hit off of, but Fort Wayne did a good job getting that puck right in front of the net. A nice tip, and then the captain, Dugan, comes in just on the rebound. It hit something on its way into that net, and it just slowly worked its way in. Just barely creeped across the goal line, but just like that, with a minute 46 left in this first period, you're looking at a 1 1 hockey game. Yeah, 18 46, the time of the goal, or 18 14, uh, the time of the goal. But yeah, 1 1 tie after that opportunity squeezes in for Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne goal is the second season. As the puck play down into the Toledo zone again, and a little bit of life here lately for Fort Wayne. Remember the shots at one point were, what, 9-1 in to favor one. of Toledo? Yeah. It's been more in Fort Wayne's favor since. Centering pass, missing. As Craggs tried to lay it back to the line for Grant Gabriel. Out of his net is Letheman. He'll play it to the aforementioned Gabriel. His long rink-wide toss was intercepted. And it'll be played for Fort Wayne. A shot right on. Rebound there. And Craggs comes crashing in, able to knock it loose. Came up to the line and a shot. Another save turned in for Letheman. Been busy here in the last minute. 
Yeah, just like that, the shots are 13 to 10. Like we said, at one point, they were 9 to 1, and Fort Wayne's kind of been creating some energy here. Yeah, they have it right off of getting the goal and give him another backhand shot, finding the back of the net, and that's Morgan Adams Moisan who finds the cage, and it's 2 1 Fort Wayne. Yeah, Fort Wayne's leading goal scorer, Moisan there, picking up his fifth of the season, but just like we said, it was a really nice pass over there by Kelb. Right over there to Linden, who finds Moisan right in the slot. A little spinorama backhand. Looks like it kind of ramps up off of the defender's stick right over Lethman's pad. But just like we talked about, I think the last five minutes there, you've kind of seen Fort Wayne start to play with a little bit more energy. And just like that, the shots are almost even. Have yeah, been a strong finish to their first period. And they have it with the lead 2-1. to one. After Toledo led most of the first. And it's picked up Hawkins. He'll back up. And he'll play it across. Bliss, tip ahead, Sentazzo will bump it deep. And Bliss to chase after a little extracurricular back at center ice. Beraldo's stick broken, so he just fired that over as he was having a chat with Moisan. Sharp angle shot by said uh, Hawkins was blocked by Parks, and it's played out. Last couple of seconds, but we're going to get a whistle with 5.7 to go here in period one. And an off, uh, excuse me, an icing call going against Fort Wayne. And we got a penalty call coming against Toledo. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the frustration picking up here. Like we talked about before, the first two minutes of the first period, I'm sorry, the first two minutes of every single period in the last two minutes are the most important periods or times of the entire period. And to give up two goals in that last minute there is not what you want. You can see a little bit of frustration and just like that, it ends up with Brandon Hawkins with a two minute penalty for slashing in the box with just 5.7 seconds here to go in the first. So they'll likely have to start that second period on the kill. Yeah, their power play for Fort Wayne is ranked 23rd in the league, 12.1% so far. You mentioned Toledo's penalty kill has been very good and 96.2% to start the season. Yeah, Coach Alden Hirschfeld always does a tremendous job with that penalty kill, getting the boys prepared and doing everything he needs. And obviously when you have guys like Conlon Keenan and Sam Craggs, guys that are willing to sacrifice, just like that right there, Conlon Keenan with a great block to finish off this period. And that's the way the period comes to a close, the Toledo wall line. They get the first goal, Oren Santazzo gave Toledo a 1-0 lead, but after that it's Fort Wayne scoring back-to-back -back goals. They lead after one, two to one over the walleye. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey. All right, back here in the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo, Sunday evening. Toledo trailing Fort Wayne 2-1 to one after one period of play. Here in the broadcast booth, Matt Melzak, Simone Denis. And we welcome in on our corner dental check-in right now, Toledo Walleye assistant coach Brent Bain, who's standing by just outside the Walleye locker room. Uh, Brent, uh, you got the start you wanted today. Carried the play there at one point. Shots are 9-1. to one. You're leading it. Uh, one to nothing, but Fort Wayne got a, a strong finish to the period. Your thoughts? I think we did have a good start. You know, we had a lot of pace to our game early. We were moving pucks quick. We were connected all three zones of the ice there, which makes uh, makes us very predictable in our play. I think at the end of the period there, we got a little unpredictable with our play, our puck decisions. We got a little stretched out, um, and our feet stopped moving there. We were trying to make plays that are 80 feet across the ice instead of just keeping it simple, staying connected. Um, and you obviously see how, how the end of the period worked out. 
Coach, obviously going back to last night, having that four, being down 4-1 early in the game, coming back with six unanswered goals. Just talk about what you love to see out of your teams, that resiliency right there, how you can build off that going into this next game, especially tonight at the end of a 3-3. Three and three. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously last night being down 4-1, the resiliency in the room, uh, that mentality we have right now, it's great to see, off the, especially early in the year. Um, our work ethic, our compete level, we never quit on pucks, never quit on battles, um, and we get rewarded for it. We're Howland's on it. If we don't have it, we're on it. Um, and that is really just that identity to our game is really what kind of carried us. We kind of got it going, our identity going, and then it just kind of took off from there. Um, that's why we've had success during the season here is just staying with that worker mentality and just grinding teams into the ground when we get when we get going like that and, and some of that Brent is that that job you guys do on the special teams let's let's target on the power play there you're one for one today already nine goals on the season with the man advantage uh, you know number one in the league here out of the gate it it is performed for you it's been a strong suit of this team right away hasn't it yeah it's massive uh, getting those special team situations whether it's power play or penalty kill those are where games are won and lost um, it's where you get momentum where you lose momentum um, so for us, it's great to see that both units have that mentality like they want to be number one unit. And when they get their opportunity, they're capitalizing on it. Um, unit one and unit two complement each other great. Um, there's, no, there's no true unit one or unit two. It's both, guy, both sets of groups that are executing, working, um, and obviously capitalizing on their opportunities. All right, Brent, thanks for the corner dental check-in as always. We'll chat again soon, and best of luck going forward here tonight. Thank you both. All right, Thanks, that man. is Brent Bain joining us here after one period of play. It's interesting. We didn't uh, hone in so much on what we need to do to come back or what mm -hmm. the Toledo Wall I need to come do to come back in this game because they just got, all they have to do is look at last night's yeah, rearview absolutely. mirror. Actually, the last two nights, the last 48 yeah. hours, to realize what they need to do, right? Yeah, and like we said earlier in the game, they've only scored the first goal one game, which was the first game of the season. So they've had unfortunately they've had a lot of experience early in the season playing from behind so they know what they need to do last night when you're down 4-1 after the first it's easy to look at tonight as just 2-1 and you don't take too many negatives from it obviously outside of the last six minutes i think the walleye had a really good first period there so you want to just re you know re-energize start that second period off how you started off that first period and i think the rest will fall into place all right stay with us when we come back plenty to get to in this first intermission the Toledo Walleye trail Fort Wayne two to one after one. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey.
Back here at the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo. We got a two to one game. Toledo trailing the Fort Wayne Comets after one period of play. I've said that in every period so far after one this whole weekend where Toledo has been trailing uh, Fort Wayne. Matt Melzak, Simone Denny back with you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights from that first period of play, Simone. And, and as we go through, we're going to see, uh, you know, really uh, this was the best chance for about the first period uh, or first half of the first period for Fort Wayne. Yeah, up until about 14 minutes into the period, that was really Fort Wayne's only opportunity there. They only had one shot halfway through the period. And John Lethman, like we said, he came prepared. He's, as we always say, he's a consummate professional. He did a great job through that first period. Brandon Hawkins, the guy can shoot the puck. <laughs> You know what? We credited a save there. That thing went off of the post and the crossbar uh, for that chance. And then here's on the power play where Toledo has excelled so much in this early going of the season. Yeah, 29%, like Coach Brent Bain just said there, the power play, the special teams battle is so huge. Sentazo with a beautiful play from Trenton Bliss there to feed that goal. But just like that, Fort Wayne started to creep back. And they did. Speaking of creeping, that one creeps across the goal line. That tied the game at one, but Fort Wayne wasn't done. Little backhand and a terrific shot uh, right there that uh, found the back of the net, and there you go. All of a sudden, Toledo is trailing uh, by one after one period of play, though they did end up with 15 shots in the opening period, so they're on pace for 45, uh, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, what they've been basically averaging going against the Fort Wayne Comets this year. Yeah, they've done such a good job against the Fort Wayne Comets, creating offense. Like we said in the opener, Fort Wayne really strives on that transition. They wait for you to mistakes. Both their goals came off of Toledo walleye mistakes, and they obviously capitalized. But the more the walleye can get that puck into the offensive zone, the more they're going to keep getting shots, and the more they're going to keep creating opportunities. And there you go. So Toledo 15 to 11 in the shot department. They have the power play goal. Fort Wayne has themselves a power play, but most of it's going to come when we start the second mm -hmm. period. They'll have a minute 55 to work with on their yeah, first. Yeah, this is a huge start right off the bat. Yesterday, we saw Sam Craig's pick up two shorthanded goals. You're not necessarily looking for a shorthanded goal at any time. When they come, it's great, but obviously right off this hop here, you're looking for a big penalty kill. Continue that for Toledo Walleye where they're feeding at 96% right now. You want to continue to stop that Fort Wayne. Like you said, they're 23rd in the league at just 11%. The more you can stop them, the more important it is, especially to start this period. All right, we'll see what Toledo does when we get to the second. But stay with us when we come back here to the Huntington Center. We talked about the specialty jerseys. Mm -hmm. we we'll talk a little bit about the proceeds for the auction today. That'll be coming up next right here at the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo on this Sunday evening. Glad you're along. It's 2-1 Fort Wayne after one. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey.
All right, here we go. All right, welcome back here to the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo, Fort Wayne 2, Toledo 1, after one period of play. We've talked about this being nonprofit night here at the Huntington Center. We showed you those specialty jerseys. Well, we have the Toledo Community Foundation in the house. They are, uh, I mean, the proceeds from the auction are going to go to you guys here. So let's, uh, let's touch on that. Keith Burnwell is with us here in the broadcast booth. First, let's talk about that, Keith. Sure. Uh, in celebration of our 50th anniversary, we had these special jerseys that were put together that across the chest shows the uh, community profile, and then non-profits are printed on the sleeves. The proceeds, really cool. Yeah, the proceeds and that's going to go into the wildlife fund that then goes back into the community to support the community. And that, that is just what is really cool about this, and the walleye wishing yes. well is very uh, big on helping out in the community, as, uh, as you guys know. So, uh, you know, the 50th anniversary is really cool. It I, is. I, I talk a little bit about that. Well, the Greater Toledo Community Foundation's mission is to build better community, and so 50 years we've been about trying to figure out what are the problems, how do we solve those problems. We work with individuals, families, and businesses to create these funds that then in turn make grants to nonprofits to directly uh, tackle these issues in town. And walleye and the mud hens are one of those funds at the foundation that we help give back to the community. Yeah, that is really cool. It doesn't matter what it is, right? You guys have done many different things. As Correct. far as helping out in the community. Correct. We, uh, I say with some jest, but truth, we've given to everything from Alzheimer's to the zoo, which is a cute way of saying from A to Z, you name the issue, <laughs> we've tried to go after it. <laughs> that is really cool, actually. Yeah, A to Z is the proper way to do it. And with the 50th anniversary, you got quite an entourage with you tonight. Well, yeah, I mean, they're following you around. So it's like a day in the life of Keith Burnwell right now. I wouldn't go that far, but, uh, you know, 50 only comes around one time right. in, in a lifetime. So we're trying to document this and then give back to the community. Just like this whole year has been one year of celebrations and events. And so we want to document it so we can talk about it and show folks throughout the community the great and good news. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, 50 years. And, and, and so much of that work, a lot of times you just there's not a lot of recognition. It just you guys do it and, it's, and, it, and you move on to the next one, right? Exactly. We work behind the scenes, and we don't always try to put our stamp on it or our logo on it. We talk about the nonprofits are in the, you know, in the pit doing the work. We want to let them do that work. We want to give them the energy to do that work by providing them the resources they need to carry that out. And in doing so, we don't always toot our horn. Yeah, it's impressive because uh, that, that would be something that you would think you'd want that recognition and want people to know even more about. Yeah. And here you are doing this interview now, and we're talking about <laughs> exactly. giving you some recognition, which is great. But, you know, in the same vein, you guys just the, – the, the key is is helping out the all of these nonprofits it, and getting them to be able to the, – the resources, right? Cor correct. And, you know, we talk to individuals, and everybody thinks it's the uh, mega rich in town. It's not actually. It's the farmers. It's the policemen. It's the firemen. It's the teacher. They all have come to a point where they want to help the community and give back, and so they create these funds. And we honor them. And then honor the nonprofits doing the work, and we figure by doing that, word of mouth to get around – and we'll have folks keep coming to us, and that has worked over these 50 years. Yeah, well, there you go. It's been uh, a great 50 years. Let's go to 50 more, right? Hey, I'm all for it. And then someone down the line is going to look at this interview 50 years ago and go, yep, that's it right there. Yeah, here, here, here's the next 50. I won't be here, but here's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly uh, enjoy it. Hey, keep up the good work, okay? Thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you so much, and thank you so much, Keith, for joining us here just to pass along that word as well. And uh, certainly looking forward to it. Hopefully auction goes great today. They usually do for these yes. so it'll be a great thing for sure and we'll keep helping out as we can i think you're right and those jerseys are beautiful so they'll go high yeah i i would certainly agree with you keith burnwell joining us here thank you so much keith appreciate it stay with us when we come back it'll be time for period number two while i have some work to do they're down two to one back in a moment this is toledo walleye hockey
Hey, back here in the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo. Walleye trail Fort Wayne by a count of two to one. On this Sunday evening, Toledo has one of three, four, and fives this year coming up next week, where they'll play here Wednesday morning, here Friday night, and then head to Fort Wayne Saturday, Indy next Sunday, a week from today. That's the uh, that's the ECHL scheduling right there. It's never ideal, but you know what? Every team's got to go through it, and the walleye, like you said, getting one of them out of the way next week. School day game on that Wednesday, so it gives the, the opportunity for a little extra few hours of rest. The key, the key is the fact that you don't have as many this year, and they're all not grouped together. Remember, uh, there's been years where you'll play three straight weeks of four and fives, and you're, yes. I mean, you're just gassed. There's oh, just absolutely. nothing left. Yeah, that especially generally when they're in February and March, where you're already 50 games into the season, then you're bunching them all up and. You're just trying to find that energy before the playoffs start. Toledo does have a big March. They do play 16 games in the month of March, so it's going to be tight there at the end of the year. As a shot right on, left them in. That came off in behind John, and that'll be whistled down. It popped loose there. So we'll have a whistle. 37 seconds into period two and a minute 18 to go in the main advantage for the Fort Wayne Comets. Good job so far on that penalty kill. They did a really good job on the initial break in there. The centerman for Fort Wayne actually broke his stick right off that opening draw, which always kind of helps because you get that four on four for even if it's only a few seconds, but it still helps. And then Sam Craggs did a really good job on that dumping to get the clear all the way down the ice. And just like that, you've killed off. I mean, you're only sitting at a minute 18 now. Looks a lot better than that daunting minute 55 at the start of the period. Yeah. I I had uh, I sat down with Conlon Keenan on Friday night, interviewed him for the first intermission, and he had talked to me about, I asked him about working with Sam Craggs because, it, you know, it goes back mm -hmm. to when Sam came out of college. This, they started playing together on the PK side of things, and, and he talked about their connection and how good it is on that. I almost know exactly where the other is at all times on the PK. Yeah, that's what you love. Anytime you can play with a player where you just find that chemistry right off the hop and especially on a shorthanded unit. You're working so much, you're talking so often, but when you kind of have that sense of where the other person's going to be, that's huge. Centering pass goes deflecting down into the corner. Dugan, who has one of the goals today for Fort Wayne, set it side of the net. Dalu couldn't stuff it in. It'll be picked up Wedman. Goes to Sidlowski. Back to Kelb. Off to the left circle as Fort Wayne will work it around. Plenty of time left in their man advantage. 55 ticks as Sidlowski has it. Sets it down low. Wedman a try. That's stopped by Letheman. Puck lifted up and out. Remember, long change in the second. So Craggs will get to the bench here and be replaced by Lewandowski. As it's played down low. And around to Sidlowski again. Up to Kelb at the blue line. He'll let a shot go. That's blocked. Puck tipped in the air. And it's Colin Tyson. Couldn't get out of the zone, but he's backed up by Adrian Beraldo, who will fish it down the ice. Yeah, good job by the Wall IPK here. Just a few ticks left on this penalty kill, looking to finish it off. Dao into the right circle. Looks things over. Fires it to Johnson at the blue line. He lost it. And Lewandowski will flip it all the way down the ice. Hawkins ready to come out of the box. And he does. Toledo has killed off the Fort Wayne power play. And Brandon Hawkins goes right into the play. He'll push it for Conlon Keenan. Going behind the net. Keenan over to the far side wall. Bounces off a check. Squeezes it up to the line. Held there. And sent down again to Keenan. He'll back it in behind the net. Hawkins set right at the side of the net. And Parks... Knocks it down, he'll cover. Yeah, good job by the walleye PK there. Now you're just sitting at just over two minutes in. You get that momentum, like we talked about, the walleye so far this season at 96.2. After that PK, a number that's gonna continue to go up. But just like that, you created a little bit of momentum. Now you wanna start getting back on that drive. Get some shots towards this net. Start this period off just like you did in that first period and start to get that momentum. Moriarty Machinery and Supply helping build the Midwest since 1908. A sponsor of Toledo Walleye Hockey. Faceoff is inside the Fort Wayne zone. It's the Comets that take it, though. And they'll play it all the way down the ice. This will go for a whistle and another icing call. And this will go against Fort Wayne. So bring it back in the end to our left. Yeah, we get a chance out here again with this first line of Trenton Bliss, Brandon Hawkins, and the goal scorer so far tonight, Oren Sintazo. 
They've done such a good job here. I mean, considering Brandon Hawkins is on a five-game goal streak, I don't think you can ask for much more offensively. Off the draw, trying to get it to the front of the net was Sentazzo. It's thrown up the far side wall, kept alive. Oren Sentazzo has it, backhand pass blocked. Bliss will pick it up. Gives way to Hawkins going behind the net. Centering pass is intercepted and Fort Wayne going the other way. As Gorniak will dump it in. Out of his net is Letheman, steers for Bliss. Backhanded Hawkins, he's got room. Fires it ahead to Sentazzo, tips down into the Fort Wayne zone. And chasing after it. Toledo unable to come up with it. They're going through a line change right at the moment. Gabriel backs up, puck right at the Toledo line. And Wedman will send it in out of his net, Letheman to settle it down. Letheman doing such a good job there, especially on that previous play, helping the forwards and the defensemen with that breakout. It's something last year that was really preached and worth, uh, worked on a lot right there with Sebastian Cosa and John Letheman last season. And you can see the strides that he's made here, and I'm sure Sebastian has made in uh, Grand Rapids as well. A play it over in the far side corner. Tied up there is trying to work his way free. Over on the far side wall was Cruz. Came to the line and a shot there that's deflected out of play. Crown wanted a call as Cruz was trying to break free. That's what he's asking now. He's like, guys, hold me up. What do I got to do? Yeah, Cruz looking for an explanation there. You can see here on the replay, he ties him up with his feet and just does not let him go off the wall. Not exactly sure how that's not interference. Obviously, Cruz was moving his feet that entire time. Whether he sold it or not, who knows, but unfortunately the walleye just continue on here. But they're doing a good job getting that offensive zone play, and now you look to see to get some more shots. 17-13, the shots on. Our fourth few shots on goal counter. Favor the Toledo walleye. Puck goes into the Toledo zone. Bumped ahead. Gattenby will play it at center ice. It'll be dropped into the Toledo zone by Johnson. Fort Wayne has been outscored 11 to 5 in the second period so far this year. Toledo's outscored opponents 9 to 6 in this frame. Their tough period has been the first. They're actually even after today at 12. Goals for 12 against in the opening period for the Walleye. Yeah, that's definitely something I'm sure that the co coach Pat Mickish and the Toledo Walleye are aware of. I mean, you always want to get a good start. And it's obviously with this crowd behind you at all times, you want to get out and start this fan base off, getting all that energy, get that walleye flying on the ice. But it's great when you know that the resiliency is there and that the boys are able to capitalize and that the walleye are able to make those comebacks and create plays in that second and third period to do whatever it takes to win. Sentazzo getting to it. He is hauled down, going into the corner. Hawkins comes over to help. And it's flipped away for Fort Wayne. As Wedman will get it across the line. Little poke check by Beraldo. Puck got in behind the net. And getting to that is Matt Anderson as he'll hand it to Sentazzo. Out to center ice, Hawkins. Racing up the near side wall is Sentazzo trying to feed Hawkins going to the front of the net. Too far in front of him. Brandon will run it down over on the far side wall. Leaves it in behind the net for Craggs. Sam Craggs, fresh off the bench, goes over to the far side board. And it was knocked away from him and out to center ice. Cullen had the stick slashed in half at center ice, lost it. Now he's got no stick out there as the puck goes down into the Toledo zone, left up the far side wall. And Cruz just took a high stick right in the face. That's going to be a penalty call. Yeah, that's huge for the walleye right there. I mean, like we've talked about, they did a good job possessing the puck there. Bad luck right there on Will Cullen's stick breaking on that pass across. But just as the puck came back into the walleye end, Cruz takes that high stick and now the Walleye have an opportunity to play six on five here until the Fort Wayne Comets are able to touch the puck. Let's see what they do with it. Cruz will hand to Tayev. To Tayev. Sends it over. And Cullen with a new piece of lumber. Sends it hard around. Wants to Tayev. He'll leave it to the line. And Greasock threw it ahead, but it's touched up by Haas. And there's your whistle. And Toledo to go to the power play. Down by a goal, but the man advantage coming out when we return. Six minutes gone here in the second. And it's a 2-1 game. Toledo trailing. This is Toledo Ball.
would have. Yeah. All right, two to one game. Get the folks fired up here at the Huntington Center. Sentazo down the near side wall. Off the draw, power play starting for the wall. Right, they're one for one with a man advantage as it's worked over to Riley McCord. McCord sent it down low, pitch forked up the far side wall, and away it goes as Sean Sidlowski, the veteran, lays it all the way down the ice. Started his pro career in 2010. Yeah, he's got a, he's had one heck of a career. Obviously a Fort Wayne Comets legend, a number of years there with the Comets. Like we talked about earlier, he's had a lot of goals in this arena against the Toledo Walleye. Hoping that maybe it doesn't happen so much tonight, but the Toledo Walleye definitely are going to be aware anytime Sean Zidlowski is on the ice with that shot he has. Yeah, you have to be, right? McCourt carrying it to center. Dropped it back, Bliss. Bliss gets across the line, leaves Sintazo just outside the left circle. He'll go rink wide, has Hawkins. Hawkins drops it back for McCourt. McCourt along the blue line, gives Hawkins again. Right circle, he'll fire the shot. And a save and a hold by Tyler Parks. Yeah, Brent Bain talked about in the second or in the first intermission there. You kind of have that 1A, 1B unit here. So now we're going to get an opportunity to see this unit for the first time tonight. Last night, we, or sorry, in the first uh, power play possession, we only had a chance to see that first group. But now you get to see Colin Tyson, Lewandowski out there, Cruz, Grisak, who's got that lethal shot there right from the middle, and then Will Cullen as well. Will Cullen, who had a power play goal on this unit last night. Yes, he certainly did. He's the lone defenseman that's out there on this group. As Tyson on the draw, puck goes off to the corner. Haas trying to clear it out. Penalty call coming, going to be against Toledo. As it's sent all the way down, there's the touch up. And it's going to be up yep, Brandon Cruz, who's going to get the penalty call. He's going to go in on a slash. And that will do it for Toledo's power plays. They'll go to one for two with the man advantage. And coming up in a minute seven, it'll be a Fort Wayne power play. You know, when those faceoffs happen on a power play in the offensive zone, there's so many times when referees maybe are looking for a situation where you're for, where the um, Toledo player is causing interference. Whatever they're doing when they're coming in on that four check, they're keeping their eyes on because you know as that defender, you're looking to either rim the puck or chip the puck over to your forward so he can clear it. So you know that forward is going to come hard on you. So a lot of the times they're looking for whether it's interference, slashing, interference, whatever the case. They're a little bit more dialed in on it, I would say, maybe than a five-on-five five where it might let go. But just like that, it's now a four-on-four four for the next 50 seconds. Yep, and off the draw, Fort Wayne trying to keep it inside the zone. Gatton B went down into the corner. It worked free there. Cullen sent it up the far side wall. Not out yet. It held in, and a shot. Linden stopped. Rebound goes in front, and it deflected just wide of the far side post. We talked about it earlier, the Fort Wayne Comets looking to capitalize on Toledo Walleye mistakes. They aren't able to get that puck out, and just like that, they create a great A scoring chance. And the puck goes in behind the net. Right off the bench is Kelp for a shot. That's blocked, and a break coming for Tyson. Tyson coming across the line. He's got Anderson laid in the pass just too far in front of him. Remember, these guys have been out for a little bit on this four-on-four. Four, and They're going to have to get to the bench for a change. Anderson trying to keep it alive deep inside the Fort Wayne zone. And the Comets now go on the power play. As they'll bring it to center ice. And it's brought across the line. Fort Wayne will drop it up to the blue line. Kelb again. Threw it down into the corner. Wedman had to go off of his stick. Cleared up to the line, but Kelb able to keep it in. Down to 40 seconds to go in the man advantage, and a quick shot. Went well wide over on the far side wall as Dugan let that go. Sidlowski couldn't hold it up, and it's blasted out by the walleye. Yeah, good job there by the walleye PK. Doing a good job keeping that puck to the outside, allowing John Lethman to see that puck through the screens, get those saves when they need it, and now you're looking at just 20 seconds left here on this power play. As the puck sent deep into that Toledo zone. And to our right with the walleye going right to left here in this period. And it's flipped out and down the ice. Good battle going over in the far side corner. Wedman's down, no call on that. Yeah, Wedman and Willits just getting a little tied up in the corner. Willits did a good job on taking that hit and taking that body on the way in. They kind of just got tangled up, but 
when you're on the PK there and you can kind of tie one man up, you can't be too upset about it. That's right. Gatton be able to hold it in. A shot from the line. And that was tip. Moisan had a tip on a deflection that was perfect in front. He just took down Riley McCord as they battle in front of the net. Comes out to center. And Cruz going to carry it across the line. Tries to get it to Bliss. And swiping it away, though, was Parks at the last moment. Linden able to get across the line. And it's handled by Toledo again. Ball I'll get to center. Sentazo hands Hawkins. Down one. Brandon Hawkins lets a shot go and parks the glove, and he'll hold it there with Sentazo right in front of the net. Yeah, some really good flow to this period so far. You're exactly 10 minutes left in this period, so you're at the exact halfway point. A lot of good flow. Both teams getting a little bit of a power play opportunity, about half of a power play each. Neither team really able to generate too many chances from it. Fort Wayne Comets have done a good job in front of the net, in front of John Lethman, getting some nice tips there, including that last one by Moisan. But Lethman's ready to play just as Tyler Parks is for the Fort Wayne Comets. And he'll hold on to it right off the draw. We'll have a timeout on the ice. Back to the Huntington Center in a moment with Toledo down one. This is Walleye Hockey. Toledo, a Sunday evening contest, Fort Wayne 2, Toledo 1. 20 to 14 the shots on our Forest View shots on goal counter. Colin Tyson will take the draw for Toledo. He's got Tutayev right behind him. Yeah, you know exactly where he's looking to go, and Tutayev looking to either get that quick shot or look for that one time over to Will Cullen. And Cullen creeped in a little bit right before the draw. It goes to Tyev. Cullen lining it up, but Tutayev sends it right to the front of the net, and it's held by Parks. Yeah, the walleye now up to six shots this period, but I would say about three of them have looked very similar to that, just kind of getting that puck on net onto Parks. You can tell what they're trying to do. They want to get that momentum, get that energy with those pucks towards the net. Fort Wayne only with three shots so far this period, but both teams generating a little chance. It's almost like they're feeling each other out this period, but... With 9.51 left, you know the fireworks are going to start to fly and that team's going to start creating some strong goal-scoring opportunities. Yeah, whether you're on or off the ice, Auto Owners Insurance and American Casualty have tailored insurance policies to meet your family's needs. That's simple in human sense. Off the draw, right circle, it's up to the line. Tutayev sends over Cullen. Cullen creeping in, he'll throw it in behind the net. Tyson tied up there. Colin Tyson sent it near side corner. Laid it up to the line, Matt Anderson. Gives way to Cullen. Cullen between the circles. Quick shot there by Keenan. Fought off by Parks. Anderson will keep it inside the zone. And sent down low. Keenan's got it. Keenan looking right. Circle shot right on. Parks another save. Over on the far side wall. Toledo keeping it inside the zone. Finally Fort Wayne able to get it out. And the Comets will get it across the line. And it's blasted right back out. Racing after it is Greasock. He is hauled down by Johnson. Penalty call coming. Going to be against Fort Wayne. And that all stems from Chase Greesock skating as hard as he could right up the middle. That's the energy you want to see created. Him skating up the middle, going for that loose puck is what started it immediately. And just like that, that's the wall I get a chance on the power play once again. Now yeah, there'll be the third time of the man advantage. Interference call going against Johnson. 
And Jake Johnson will sit for the next two. Yeah, the walleye looking here with just about nine minutes to go. The walleye are looking for this power play to create energy. Of course, you want to score on every single power play possible, but if you're not able to score, you want to create that energy, get that momentum that's going to give your team that opportunity to run with these next nine minutes and continue opportunities to score goals. Face off inside the Fort Wayne zone. It's played around to Hawkins. He'll hand to McCourt. McCourt, a shot from the blue line. Had some traffic getting in front, but a glove save and a hold for Tyler Parks. Yeah, the walleye, like we mentioned, 29.6% on the power play. The Fort Wayne Comets, 66.7% on the PK. It is obviously early in the season, and they are going to get that number up. But right now, the more you can take advantage and create power play chances and get that puck to the net, the more you want to see. Linden looking for it short-handed. Couldn't get a shot off as the puck down in the near side corner. They will set it up, and Dugan's going to score short-handed. Make it 3-1, Fort Wayne. Yeah, Jack Dugan there with his second goal of the night. Really, really beautiful pass from behind the net by Linden. But just like that, you get a two-on-two -two opportunity down the ice. The Walleye aren't able to win that puck battle back down the corner. Three, four guys stuck there, and one guy open in front. And just like that, the four-wing Comets take a 3-1 lead. As they get the shorthanded goal for a change, Toledo a two last night. Positive part being a minute 37 left on this power play. Like we talked about before, you get this 1A, 1B unit here. So you get the Tyson, Lewandowski, Grisok, uh, Cullen, and Cruz unit out here with an opportunity here to get that goal back with a minute and a half still. As we'll line up for the faceoff at center. Toledo down two for a third consecutive day. They were down 2 nothing in the game on Friday. And down, as we mentioned, 4-1 last night. And now 3-1 today. As Lewandowski hands it over, top of the right circle it goes. Cruz will take it along the far side wall. He'll spin into the right circle, drops it down low. And the puck will be left. Lewandowski to chase after it, going behind the net. And it's held by Toledo as Cruz hands for Cullen. Goes across, back to Cruz again, looking in front of the net. He will sweep it there. It'll come across. Centering pass from Greesock was deflected wide. Wedman played it in behind the net. Tyson tipped over to Greesock for Lewandowski between the circles, and it is ripped into the Toledo bench, and then it'll be whistled down. Yeah, this unit doing a good job of getting those seam passes through. You can see the number of times that Greesock was looking across to Cruz, looking across to Lewandowski. Uh, on the last play there, Greesock looked at the back door there to call in Tyson. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to get through, but this unit doing a really good job of possessing that puck. If trying to find those seams is just a, the more you're able to get that goaltender moving side to side, the more opportunities you're going to get for those open lane shots. It's not always the easiest when you're able to just walk down and take a shot, whereas if you get that goalie sliding, you start creating gaps. Cullen goes rink wide, set up towards the front of the net, and a good tip in front by Lewandowski, turned away. As Parks made that save, he's got 24 stops so far in the game. Cruz, left circle, sent it across. Greesock, a shot. That got tipped wide. Another look in front, and Lewandowski's chance got deflected up and out of play. Just like we talked about there with those seam passes, the walleye did a really, really nice job there. Cruz over to Greesock. Shot gets blocked, but a really nice looking play to Lewandowski. I don't know if Parks got a piece of that or whether that ramped up, but right up into the netting and now the walleye power play has 25 seconds here left looking to continue to get that momentum and look for an opportunity to get a goal and that's where this face-off comes in so key simone when you've got only 25 seconds left it does you want to do everything you can like we said to possess that puck with 25 seconds you want to get that energy right away to be able to win that face-off back and set up that zone time to take full advantage of those 25 seconds whereas as if you don't win the face off you're probably chasing that puck back and losing the last realistically 10 seconds of the power play as Cruz sent it in front Parks will knock that away and Fort Wayne a chance to clear they will gonna be a positive run for Fort Wayne on this power play for Toledo not only are they gonna stop the Toledo power play but they've also got a shorthanded goal yeah their first shorthanded goal of the year for a unit that was going at 66%, you got to be pretty happy when you come out of it up a goal. Craggs with a shot. One-timer from the left circle knocked away by Parks. 
Toledo still has it though. McCourt looking, goes across, they score! Conlin Keenan! And it's a 3-2 game. Conlin Keenan continues his hot streak there. Now his fourth straight game with a goal right there. What a beautiful give and go there with Riley McCourt. One play over to McCourt. McCourt comes down. Keenan finds that backdoor lane, and the puck goes right back over for him to run basically a backdoor tap in. It all started there right at the end of the power play. You get a nice opportunity there by Sam Craggs. But as you see here, the give and go from McCourt to Keenan, finding that backdoor lane, and a nice easy tap in for Conlon Keenan. And with that, Toledo has some life again in the building. Down just one. Three to two. So Conlin Keenan, goal number five. For Keenan. And Sam Craggs keeps his point streak alive, getting a helper on that goal. Riley McCord as well. And uh, that's as easy a goal as Conlon Keenan's going to score. Well, I say that, but he did have the empty netter the other <laughs> night. <laughs> that is true, but you know what? That might as well have been an empty netter. They had a really good job, like we talked about, just like on the power play. The more you can create seam passes and get that goalie sliding in a situation there where the goalie screened, McCourt did a really nice job, and the goalie didn't even have a chance to see it. Penalty call coming going to be against Toledo this time, and it's going to be on Riley McCord as Fort Wayne has the puck. They'll take it down low, backed up to the blue line, Gatton Extra skater is on, but not going to matter here as the whistle is going to sound and Toledo is going to be shorthanded when we come back to the Huntington Center in downtown Toledo. 5.56 to play in the second. Fort Wayne 3, Toledo 2. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey. I looked up, I saw the replay. All right, busy night here in downtown Toledo. We haven't picked up our paid figure yet. We will probably in the third period, but good crowd as Toledo is down 3-2 right now to the Fort Wayne Comets, and they're going to be short-handed. You know, Riley McCourt getting the penalty call. Yeah, that penalty looked very similar early in the game when Colin Tyson drew one as well from right in front of the net. A stick came up, and... That looked almost identical. Unfortunately, it went against the Toledo Walleye. Yep, cross-checking call on McCourt. So he's in the box, says Toledo. We'll back up with Fort Wayne getting it to the line. A whistle, though, and an offside call going against the Comets. We've talked all night about it. We'll talk all season about it. That special teams battle is just so important in these games. Obviously, the Toledo Walleye did a good job earlier in the game to get that power play goal. They've done a good job so far tonight on that penalty kill to limit the Comets to very very little scoring opportunities but obviously Fort Wayne picking up that shorthanded goal on the last walleye power play so as a Toledo walleye here with just 535 left in this period you want to do a really really good job to limit Fort Wayne's opportunities yeah because even if you go to the locker room here at 3-2 it's you're still uncomfortable where you can get this game knotted up and still come away with a win you don't want to keep going to the multiple goal period to come back and win yeah no it's as great as it is to have you know three goal four goal comebacks it's not something that you want to make routine so you definitely want to keep this a one goal game or kill this off and get an opportunity to get one back that's right as it goes down in the corner matt anderson kicked it free from wedman it's played all the way up to the line it'll be held in there though by the comments 
As they set up Sidlowski for a shot, and that hit Wedman at the side of the net. That stung him a bit. Sidlowski over to Kelb. His shot right in the glove hand to John Letheman, and he'll hold on to that. Yeah, I've been on the ice for a Sean Zidlowski shot or two, and I can tell you that right there does not feel good. Looked like it hit him right about in the midsection. You can tell he's hurting a little bit from that one. Uh, Matt Wedman, that's definitely not a good feeling. And, I mean, you know, you know Zidlowski's going back to the bench there, giving him an old tap, saying, sorry, bud. But, hey, I mean, the Toledo Walleye, it's not a shot on goal. Just like that, the Walleye continue to drain this penalty kill. 4.47 to go. In the second period, Craggs to take the draw. He's got Keenan with him, those two. At the faceoff, one by Fort Wayne. Johnson to Linden. Linden, side of the net. Vulcan had to go off of his stick. He recovers, sends it up the far side wall. Johnson will have it along the blue line. He'll look, give way there to Comier. Back to Johnson. His shot grazed off a of body in front wide. Held in by Fort Wayne as Linden has it just outside the right circle. He'll throw it down low. Trying to spin in front was Vulcan. He's on a three-game point streak and had his bid stopped right there. Johnson has it up along the blue line again. Over to Linden. Rink wide it goes. Cormier set it in front. What a stop by Letheman, but the rebound they score. As Vulcan is able to tap it home. Fort Wayne with a power play goal, and they lead it 4-2. to two. Yeah, the Fort Wayne power play doing a really good job there. It started with the behind-the-back pass right from that left hash there. It's like we talked about on the walleye power play. You're really, really looking for those seam pass opportunities. Just like that, the walleye, or I'm sorry, the Fort Wayne comments. Linden gets that seam pass across. John Letheman with an unbelievable save in the first place to get that with his back leg not even being able to look, but unfortunately the puck squeaked out, and the Fort Wayne comments are able to put it back in the net to give them the two-goal cushion. Yeah, 4-2, Fort Wayne. And that is the first power play goal that they have scored against Toledo this season in 19 tries. And the man advantage, and only the second that Toledo has allowed. Yeah, that's an absolute testament to the way Coach Hirschfeld has had their team going on the penalty kill. Obviously, you don't want to give up that goal with just under five minutes to go here in this second period. Now looking at a two-goal deficit, but... Like we said, without 27 shots on goal and four minutes to go in this period, the period's certainly not over yet, and you're looking for that opportunity to make this a one-goal game before this period's over. And Bliss gets it in behind his own net, and he'll battle for it along with Johnson as they try to free it up. It goes to Hawkins. Set Sentazo, and he'll work it out to center ice. Fort Wayne will take it there. That goes to Haas. He'll drive it in and around over on the far side wall. It's blocked in behind the net. This 4-2 game. Fort Wayne in front. As a shot from the blue line goes wide. After it is Bliss. Cullen couldn't handle it. He'll continue to keep it inside Toledo's zone. Cullen trying to free it up. Bliss working it up the far side. Hawkins hands it back to Bliss. And... One of our officials right in the way there, but he managed to recover and get it out to center ice. Anderson to Santazo. Santazo trying to pop it right in front. It was blocked there. Now a couple of slashes going the other way. And now we're going to get a penalty call coming. A slash being signaled, and it is going to go against the Fort Wayne Comets. No, you'll take that anytime. Obviously, the Good job by the Walleye to get that breakout. Nice pass there by Matt Anderson up to uh, Sentazo. Getting him down into the zone. After the play, you can see 55 just follows through. Uh, Gattenby follows through. A little bit of a whack both ways, but unfortunately in hockey, majority of the time, the retaliation is called above the original. And just like that, now the Walleye have a power play opportunity. Like we said, you're really looking to make this a one-goal game before you have to go into that third period. Now Toledo to the power play and the slashing call that goes to Xavier Bernard. <laughs> Off the draw, puck gets down into the corner. And Lewandowski trying to hold it up. It's freed up. Lewandowski couldn't keep control, though, in the left circle, and Linden's going the other way. At center ice, we might have another penalty call coming. Wedman 
threw down Colin Tyson as Fort Wayne was making their way into the zone. And we're going to have, yes, another call against the Comets. Toledo's going to have a five on three for a minute and 43. Five on threes do not come very frequently, so you need to take absolute full advantage of that. Colin Tyson did a good job battling in the middle there, but you can see immediately as the uh, as Wedman comes across there, as he pulls him back down, takes Tyson down, and that draws the penalty just like that. Now you have an opportunity, what appears to be a five on three. Looks like we're looking to get a little bit of clarification here from the referees as he talks to both the captains there. Talking to Moisan and Brandon Hawkins, trying to figure out what's going on, whether it's a five on three or four on four. Well, it would still be a power play for Toledo, so it could be a four on three if they're sending both off here. The referee's original signal did call for interference. Now as to yeah. which side he called it on is now the question mark. Yeah, they're, they're pointing at the Fort Wayne bench. Yeah, and it's Wedman. That, and there you see uh, in the background there, Wedman, he, he's asking the question of why it's him. And he's definitely the one going in. Toledo's going to have the five on three. That's, yep. they yeah. finally put it up on the board there. Yeah, I mean, Coach Jesse Kalashi is having a nice talk there with uh, with Rocco Stechioak. Um, you can see he's not definitely happy with that call, but, I mean, the walleye with a minute 43. You have an opportunity here on the power play. You can see as they get tangled up in the middle, the way he pulls back and takes Tyson down, it is a clear interference call, and now you got a minute 43 to generate a goal. Well, our friends at Life Connection Ohio want to remind you, Oregon Donations, the ultimate power play. Say yes to saving lives, lifeconnection.org. Toledo will have to retreat back in their own end. Two and a half to go in the period. They've got a great chance to close the gap. McCourt has it top of the right circle, five on three. A lot of time to work with to tie it over to McCourt. They'll get it down low to Hawkins. Hawkins still with a puck as he takes it up. Between the circles, he'll let a shot go. Went off a leg and off to the corner. Back to Hawkins along the blue line. Plenty of room for Brandon. Does he tee it up? No, he'll hand it back to Tutayev. Tutayev will switch with McCord. Tutayev drops it there, Sentazo. Sentazo looking, sets it to Hawkins. Hawkins down low it goes, Tutayev. Sentazo in front. Hawkins with a puck, left circle, fires a shot, block. Sentazo threw it in front. It won't go. Off to the corner. It's picked up by McCord. McCord into the right circle. Gave it to Hawkins. Hawkins. Blistering shot. Stop. Rebound. And Bliss couldn't tuck it in. It went wide. Puck still down low. Fed up towards the line, but picked off Linden. He'll play it out. Racing up is Letheman. He tried to set it for Tutaya. Missed, and it's whistled down. Yeah, the walleye power play generating a lot of good shots. you got to give credit to those Fort Wayne defensemen. Two absolutely huge blocks on Brandon Hawkins' shots. I can promise you those do not feel good to get in front of, but you know what? you got to give them credit on those blocks. Sentazo made a really good opportunity there to Trenton Bliss. He had the other one on the left side of the net there, not able to bury it. And just like that, as you can see, just kind of gets pushed down at the same time he was going for the shot there to try to get into the back of the empty net. But... 22 seconds left here still on this five on three, so you want to get a chance to get in zone and get a chance at a shot. As they will get it across the line quickly to Hawkins. Still time with a man advantage. And they'll throw it over to Tutayev. One-timer, Sentazo. And it got blocked. Off to the corner it goes. Set up to the line, McCourt. Power play number one about to end as it goes to Tutayev. With a minute left, yes, and out of the box it goes for Fort Wayne. And they'll clear it all the way down the ice. That's going to do it for the power play time. Toledo's going to be one for five with a man advantage. They'll bring it up to center. Quickly across the line is Craig. Left to Tayev. It got through his stick. Look out here at center. Wedman's out of the box. Fort Wayne going on the attack. And they'll take it with 30 to go in the period. And sent down into the corner. Wedman tied up by Craig's who peeled away with a puck. Riesock was knocked down by Wedman away from the play as Craggs carries in. 
15 to go in the period. Anderson set it back to the line. Cullen, Rister went high and wide. 10 seconds left to go in the period as Fort Wayne has it. And Haas able to get it out to center ice. Delayed offside call won't matter so much here as the horn will sound, taking us to the end of two periods of play. Now the Toledo wall line. They got a goal in the second from Conlon Keenan. But Fort Wayne struck for two more, and they lead after two periods of play by a score of four to two. Big conversation going on right in front of that Toledo bench. Yeah, the, the rivalry continues with these teams. There's no doubt about that. Whether it's the start of a new season and a whole bunch of new players, that rivalry between Fort Wayne and Toledo will always continue. Yeah, it certainly has. We're through 40 minutes. 4-2 Fort Wayne. Back with the second period intermission report in a moment. This is Toledo Wall Line Hockey. All right, here we go. All right, we are back here at the Huntington Center after two periods of play. It's a 4-2 to two game. The Fort Wayne Comets doubling up Toledo after 40 minutes. Welcome you back here inside the broadcast booth. Matt Melzak, Simone Denny with you. And uh, in a few minutes, we'll be hopefully joined by Oren Santazzo just outside the walleye locker room. We'll... Uh, let you know when he is ready. Mm -hmm. But Toledo had a good shot there late in the period. Uh, Simone, that five on three. Credit mm -hmm. Fort Wayne. They killed it off. Yeah, Fort Wayne with two really big blocks there. Obviously, you know when you're creating a five on three, you're going to have time and space. You're looking for opportunities to get that puck. Who else better to have it in the hands of Brandon Hawkins? But give credit to those Fort Wayne defensemen. That's two huge blocks and then an opportunity that just didn't go in the back of the net. All right, let's go down just outside the locker room. Oren Santazo joins us right there. Oren, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Uh, and, and this is the end of a 3-3 three and three with the same team. It has been quite a battle for you, hasn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean they're a hard-working team, so we just got to pick our stuff up and keep going with it. Or in obviously your first season here in Toledo after playing in another powerhouse team in Newfoundland. Talk about what the transition, the adjustment's been like playing here in Toledo so far this season. I mean, it's a blast. I mean, we got the best fans in the league here. Uh, they always give us that go juice at the start of the game and throughout it. So, yeah, thank you so much for that, and let's get going. All right, yeah, let's talk about your goals tonight back in the opening period. Uh, Oren, uh, they, they gave you guys the lead. It hasn't happened a lot this year where you guys have struck first, but you were able to do so tonight. Yeah, I mean, yeah, power play goal there. That's a big goal. Um, Blisser got it to me in the slot, and I just kind of fired it away and just found the back of the net. So, Yeah, here's a here's a look at it there. Yeah, it was really the pass by Bliss, wasn't it? Really set you up nice. Yeah, very nice. Put it right in my wheelhouse. So, All right, what do you guys got to do here in the third period? You're, you're accustomed to coming from behind. You guys have done it a lot here in the early going of the season. What do you have to do here in the third to do that again today? Just stick to our guns, uh, get the puck moving north, and uh, you know, just bear down. All right, Or appreciate it. Thanks for the time and the check-in. Appreciate it. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. All right, it. Thanks, thank buddy. you. That is Oren Sintazo joining us, and he dropped in a sir for us. Yeah. I, I appreciate That's that. Very polite. Was that to you or to me? I, probably I, to you, <laughs> not 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 so to me, uh, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, good stuff there. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously a very skilled player you're seeing, yeah. it, and you're catching him right at the end of a shift coming off the for ice. For sure. You couldn't tell. It, for it sure. happens a lot, right? It does, exactly. Uh, no, he's such a talented hockey player, and you see it in the goal. See it in the little plays he makes there on the ice. 
him, Bliss, and Hawkins just complement each other so well, and they're just such talented players, the three of them, but they have that chemistry as well. Yeah, just finding a way now in that last period. you got 20 mm -hmm. minutes left of the weekend, you know, to go out there and try to get this thing tied up. Uh, we'll see if Toledo's able to do that when they hit the third period. All right, stay with us. When we come back, we got our This Day in Toledo Hockey History. Great thing we're doing, a show called Hook that you'll be able yeah. to see on ToledoWalleye.com. We'll show you a little preview of that as well when we return here to the Huntington Center. Toledo down 4-2. to two. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey. Oh, oh, yeah. Another commercial. All right, back here at the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo. Walleye down 4-2 to two to the Fort Wayne Comets after two periods of play. Welcome you back here inside the broadcast booth. Matt Melzak, Simone Denny. And let's get into our This Day in Toledo Hockey history. And we start uh, with... About Toledo Hockey Hall of Famer Greg Jablonski turns 89 years young later this month. The Waterville resident was 36 years old when he scored just six seconds after the opening faceoff of Sports Arena on this date, 1971. A goal coming in a 5-3 Hornets victory over the Dayton Gem. International Hockey League did not keep such statistics, but it should be noted that the National Hockey League record for quickest goal to start a game is just one second faster than the one scored by Greg Jablonski. How about wow. that? That's talk about a start to the game. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a heck of a start. All right, let's move on. Toledo Hockey Hall of Famer and Storm coach Chris McSorley, none too happy about his club 9-8 ECHL shootout loss to the Louisville Ice Hawks of the Sports Arena in 1992. I mean, how about that? Well, look, you never point fingers at anybody on our hockey club, McSorley said. We win as a team, we lose as a team. I'm not ready to pull the plug uh, <laughs> pull the plug in the tub, <laughs> but I'm really concerned about different positions on this team. One player McSorley did not worry about was Ian Duncan. will join his coach in Toledo Hockey Hall of Fame in January. Duncan recorded a team record six assists in the loss. Six assists six. in the loss. That's a Shane Birchback stat right there. That, <laughs> yeah, that certainly is. All right, finally, goaltender Joey McDonald played his only game for the Storm during the 05-06 season on this date, a 4-1 win over Trenton. 
at the sports arena. Joey Mack, who last started for the Storm in 01-02, was sent down from Grand Rapids for just one game. It was his final appearance in the ECHL. That next season, he began an eight-year career in the National Hockey League, playing for Detroit, Calgary, Boston, Toronto, and the New York Islanders. Wow, that's unbelievable to see. Anytime you can get those ECHL guys playing in the NHL, it's it's something special. Not only that, he got to wear that 0506 Storm jersey yeah. that had like was, the Cyclone on it. I was going to say, that's one I've never seen. But I'm used to seeing just the traditional Storm logo. So when you I, see something different, it's cool. It is, it is something, let yeah. me tell you. All right. Uh, you know what? Uh, with having guys like Jordan Strack now part yep. of our organization here, we got a chance to do a really cool thing this year, kind of a behind the scenes to the Toledo Walleye training camp and yeah. into the start of the season and here's a little bit of a preview of what you're going to see in the show called hooked that will be on toledowalleye.com how do you describe what toledo is like to other people i start off by saying i'm going to tell you how it is but it's not going to do justice. It's, uh, I can only explain so much, but you have to be there to experience it because it's that much better than what I'm explaining. It's the NHL East Coast League. Probably the best way to ex explain it. You come here on any given night, we have over 7,500 fans. In terms of our team and, and how we're taking care of, you're taking care of like NHL players. We have strength conditioning. We have full-on massage therapist. We have everything you could imagine, and a lot of places don't have that. So it was a big pitch is coming here. Is it really is playing like playing in the NHL while being in this league. It's as special as it gets. I tell people all the time, you almost have to experience it to believe it. Um, this is the most passionate fan base. Um, I, would, I rival it with any organization at any level. No matter where you are in your career, your junior hockey, your pro hockey, I don't care if you make it all the way to the NHL, this may be one of your best experiences as far as the fan base goes. And it, it becomes part of something bigger than anything you've ever experienced. And it makes you want to win for them. It's just, it's just it's a unique situation. And I'm saying it because I experienced it for two years, but I think any player that played here will talk very similar about it. Wow, did I miss this place? Wow, wow, wow. It's almost like you can't really put into words how much it means to play here. And I think it's more than just a hockey team that you're coming here to play for. You're representing a city. Um, you're representing people, you know, the hardworking people at Toledo. And, um, you know, they, you know, spend their hard-earned money to come watch us. And, um, you know, they're here every night supporting us no matter what, through good, through bad. So just having them, um, you know, support us all the way and uh, even the way we get treated, um, you know, from top to bottom is it's second to none. It's a first-class organization. And it's something that, like I said, you almost can't, put into words how good it is or, or how special it is to be a part of this organization because of just everything they do for you, um, you know, as a person, as a hockey player, um, just every, everything in your life, every little tiny detail, they're, uh, you know, helping you any way they can. And there you go, all access to the Toledo Walleye. Get into ToledoWalleye.com slash hooked mm -hmm. to find out more. And special thanks to Corey Marshall. Great job putting that together on, yeah. the, on the editing side and the shooting of it. And, Absolutely. And, yeah, and he's, piecing that together. You know, he's one of the best in the business, there's no right. doubt. All the videos he makes, but to see that product, I can't wait to watch a full episode. Yeah, he is a video guru, no yes. question about it. And he put together one more video part that we could throw in right now, and that's of this guy. Oh, if you no. remember, behind the scenes, look at this stuff. <laughs> that you used to do here as uh, just having a lot of fun shooting all of these things <laughs> and being a part of it. Oh, that's too Even funny. trying to play football. This is one of my favorites. There we go. When See, you're messing I'm, with Brad. I'll tell you what. There's one thing about my hockey career. I can – all the accolades, all the things on the ice were great, but there is no place that I had more fun playing hockey <laughs> than for this team and with the staff, with all the people behind the scenes, and I always knew where the camera was. I was always prepared. <laughs> Yes, you were always <laughs> prepared, no question about it. And uh, there you go. You enjoyed playing here for sure. Ah, this best place in my career, without a doubt. This is the most fun hockey I've ever had. Being a part of this place for three years was just 
It was truly amazing. There's a reason that my wife and my son and I want to make this home, who they're watching right now, so hi to Griffin and Amber. But it's just such a special place, and I'm truly proud to be a part of the Toledo hockey community and now getting to do this with you. And now that you're in the broadcast booth, as we saw there when you had the beard, you got to yeah. grow it back in now. I, apparently. I mean, i gotta, I got to try, try to look as good as you. you That's gotta, the goal, you got to get so. back to the beard side. I, you know what? I guess it's hey, you're starting. You got you got. You know, it looks I gotta, like you've won a throw day the or way, two. I got to so. throw the razor away. There Simple you go. Just that. throw it away. <laughs> Start joining us back on the beard <laughs> side. All right, stay with us when we come back. Simone Denny and I'll break down the second period for it's four two, Fort Wayne in front. We'll be right back. This is Toledo Ball on Hockey. Sure, and we'll roll through them, yep. All right, second period highlights. Here we go. And it didn't look so good again for Toledo. They got out scored two to one. John Lethman, though, a couple of nice stops. In, especially in the early part of that second period, Simone. Yeah, the Fort Wayne Comets, they started on that power play right at the start of the period. They got that energy from it. A shorthanded goal there. Never what you want to see when you're on the special teams unit, but unfortunately the Comets took a 2-1 lead there from a goal by Dugan. And then, and boy, I'll tell you, Toledo had a lot of really good chances that just didn't find the back of the net, especially when they got on the five on three. Yeah, a lot of chances there. Like we said, you got to give credit to that Fort Wayne defense for doing a really good job of blocking shots, just like you can see. But this beautiful goal there, what a give and go there from McCourt and Keenan. Keenan gives him the puck, finds him back door, just an easy tap in, and Keenan bumps his goal streak up to four games. And then Fort Wayne finally striking on the power play. The 19th time they've gone to the man advantage against Toledo this year. They finally find the back of the net. Yeah, we talked about that period there. The seam pass is to get the goalie moving, move the box of that power play. Fort Wayne does it. Letham makes an incredible save to start, but unfortunately that rebound's just sitting there and they're able to tuck it in. And this was as close as Toledo came. Credit Parks there with that left leg getting out there at the last moment. Look at the shot on a forest few shots on goal counter. 30 to 19 in favor of Toledo. But they trail four to two with the third period. Coming up next from here at the Huntington Center, this is Toledo Walleye Hockey.
we're back here at the Huntington Center, downtown Toledo. It's a 4-2 game as we get ready to start the third period of play. Fort Wayne, three and one, leading after two periods of play this year, while Toledo is 2-0 oh and one. When trailing after two periods of play to start the young season, Matt Melzak, Simone Denny, back with you. And we'll see what they can do here in the third. Obviously, the next goal, Simone, is paramount. Absolutely massive. You don't, last thing you want to do is go down three. Well, obviously, we know the walleye were able to come back from three yesterday after the first. But if you have a three goal deficit in that third period, it's pretty detrimental. So you definitely want the walleye to get out here early, get these quality shots, and get that first goal. And we'll see if they can do just that. As Hawkins, Bliss, and Tanzo start up front. Gabriel and McCourt defensively. As a turnover right at the Toledo line, Olette Bliss to bring it across the line. But sets up Sentazo, Haas watching him. Sentazo getting behind the net, then he's rubbed out of the play. And it is played out to center ice. And yeah, the walleye doing a good job here so far. Just under a minute in, but doing a good job of getting that puck deep. They're going to need to get that puck deep and continue to get these shots on goal. Like we talked about, 30 through two periods, they got to continue to get good pucks on that net, but mostly get quality shots on parks. As Vulcan takes a hit at center from Conlon Keenan, puck drifted into the Toledo end. Anderson has it, sets it up Keenan. Long pass ahead, tipped down the ice. Fort Wayne thought it would be an icing call, but no whistle there. They waved it off, and play continues on. Wedman will flip it ahead. Vulcan to chase after it. Tied up as he goes in behind the net and lost control of the puck. That's where it'll be grabbed and played. Coming out to center, Tyson ripped one in high and wide. Greasock will be the first one to it. He'll leave it for Anderson. Back for Greasock, going behind the net. Chase Greasock up the near side wall, left at Willits. He'll fire a shot, tipped wide, picked up and played by Sam Craggs. He'll come out, left circle, ripped one. And I think Parks got a piece of it to deflect it out of play. Yeah, it looked like it just tipped right off the side of Parks' glove and right up in the stands. But the way Sam Craggs has been playing so far to start this season is unbelievable. It's exactly what you want to see out of him. Creating that speed, seeing an opportunity there to just walk in and get that shot off. It wasn't off by much. Obviously, it was a good save there by Tyler Parks, but the walleye continue to get good quality shots and continue to get opportunities off offensive zone faceoffs. Like we talked about earlier, Sam Craggs, his first time playing center. Last season, he was playing on the wing mostly. Gives him an opportunity to get a little bit more invested into the game when he's moving. He's continually making plays in the D zone, but he's getting a good job creating opportunities there up the middle of the ice, and he's obviously been doing a tremendous job so far this season with his numbers. Willett's got it across the line. and skipped off of the skate of Cruz, who was trying to keep it inside the zone, and played back down into the Toledo end. Swept up the far side wall, and a shot right on. Left him in the stop. Zach got through some traffic. Beraldo able to steer it up the near side board. And Greasock able to get it up to center ice. And it's back into the Fort Wayne end. Two and a half gone here in the third period. Fort Wayne lead of four to two. Sidlowski threw it in front. And skipped off a stick in front of the cage. And it'll be played up the center. Hawkins coming across the line. He'll leave it there and a blast for Santazzo. That Parks will deflect up over the glass and out of play. You can see some really nice chemistry coming from this line. Just a little simple plays that maybe you don't notice. Really nice pass there from Trenton Bliss all the way over to Sintazo. Sintazo does a good job finding Hawkins to lead him, but Hawkins able to just lead Sintazo back. It's those little plays that maybe you don't necessarily notice. They look very simple, but those intricate plays to be able to find guys ahead of you and continue to get that full speed when you're going up ice. Continually, they're going to be able to create more and more chances throughout the season, and they're going to get more and more goals as a unit. Sentazzo will line up to take the draw after Bliss waved out of the faceoff circle. It pops down and Fort Wayne will take it. Comets probably hoping as long as they can just keep pushing the clock along with this two goal lead, right? You know, absolutely. They're three minutes into what's going to be a long third period. Toledo's going to do everything they can to get pucks to that net, and they are going to continue to take chances. 
Fort Wayne on the other side may play a little bit more defensively and a little bit more stay at home, and that's where the Walleye are going to have to capitalize. Gabriel has it at the blue line. Goes rink wide to McCourt. He'll fire a shot with Bliss in front and a glove and a hold as hanging on as Parks once again. Yeah, Parks doing a good job. He's been seeing the puck really well so far tonight. Coming in tonight with a save percentage of 898, he's done a tremendous job so far. I mean, 20, sorry, 30 saves so far on 32 shots. He's done a really good job seeing that puck tonight, deflecting away any opportunities that the wall I've had in front. But now the wall I need to get that puck there and continue to hound the puck. You're going to have to get a dirty garbage goal, and whatever it takes, you got to go ahead and get that next goal to make sure you make this a 4-3 hockey game. Yeah, Mitch Lewandowski, he's going to cut in front. Puck was knocked off of his stick and controlled by Fort Wayne. As they'll get it out to center ice, Gorniak will just lay it down into that Toledo zone. And it'll be flashed out to center ice. Keen in there to blast it in. Johnson will play up the near side, but he gives it away to Cullen. Cullen, rank wide, Willits. Willits threw it towards the front of the net, tipped by Keenan, went wide. Conlon will go in behind the net and sets it up right circle for Tyson. Goes back to Willits. His shot blocked off to the corner. Lewandowski to chase after it, but Fort Wayne will give it a high flip out. Got to give a lot of credit, just like we talked about earlier. That Fort Wayne team, just like Toledo is, they're not afraid to block shots. Guys are willing to sacrifice whatever it takes to make the plays. A really nice block there by Moisan. There's a reason that guy's the captain of the Fort Wayne Comets. Yeah. Long-time AHLer, Rockford. Now with Fort Wayne. Buck near side. Now we'll send it down into the Toledo zone. Out of his net, Lethemann. And it is fed near side for Willits. His pass ahead, tipped by Cruz down into the Fort Wayne zone. Territorial-wise, Toledo's had most of the play so far in the third. To be expected, down two. And they're after it again. Crags with a shot, stop, rebound, another try. To the front of the net, it goes, and it won't get it past Parks. He's able to hold it out. Fort Wayne racing up the ice. Kelb. Trying to sneak to the front of the net. That's blocked. And Cruz losing an edge. Wedman a shot. He scores. And it bounced away from Brandon Cruz. And able to cash in is Matt Wedman. That's about unlucky of a play as you could get right there. The Toledo Walleye comes so close at one end of the ice with an opportunity to try to score there. Just like that, it comes back almost on a three-on-two rush. Cruz just loses his footing. Looks like he lost an edge on his skate, and Wedman was able to walk right in. Really nice shot right over the low blocker of John Lethemann. And, you know, the Fort Wayne Comets now with a 5-2 lead. You're playing from behind as a walleye. The energy's got to pick up, and you got to get the next one soon. Well, now, yeah, that, that becomes a very tall order, doesn't it? No, it really does. I mean... Being down three goals in the first period is one thing, but being down with three goals with 14-33 is a whole nother. It is absolutely possible, and the Walleye have proven that they've done it before. They've played from behind before, but that's a tough uh, tough opportunity, especially after you create such a good chance here. Sam Craig's getting that puck to the net. Like we said, it wasn't going to be pretty. You get so close to getting that puck in the net. Give credit to Tyler Parks for keeping that puck out of there, however it was. And just like that, the puck goes to the other end, and the Fort Wake Commons take a three-goal lead. And that's why they're up 5-2. And in good shape to pick up their first win of this series as Hawkins will send it in front. A shot. They score! Sentazzo has his second. And it's a 5-3 game. Hey, we talked about it right there. They needed a goal quick, and they got one quick. What a beautiful play there by Brandon Hawkins to find Oren Sentazzo in the slot. Two goals from the slot there for Sintazzo tonight. He's in the right place at the right time. First one from a great pass from Trenton Bliss, and this one a beautiful pass from Brandon Hawkins. And my, my, how quickly things can turn. As Fort Wayne scored at 518, Toledo counters at 533. That's huge right there, a 15-second swing, and just like that, you get the crowd back into this. You can hear the noise and the atmosphere starting to pick up in this barn once again. 14-27, lots and lots of time for a two-goal lead. You got to get the next one and continue to go from there, and the excitement in this arena is going to project. 
just like coach talked about in the pregame show, this arena will help lift this play team up, keep these players going, and they'll do everything it takes. A lot of convo going on as Lewandowski trying to line up at the red line. Buck is down. Two goal game again. Toledo wins the draw. McCord will have to slide back into his own zone to get it. And uh, crowd reacting as Comier lost an edge. It's brought back in for Toledo. Here they come. Tyson threw it in front. They score! Conlin Keenan makes it a one goal game. And how about that? This place absolutely erupts. What a beautiful goal there by the Toledo Walleye. Nobody said it had to be pretty. The Walleye do a good job of getting that puck in the zone. It appears that it was Colin Tyson, throws it over to the side of the net there. Just like that, Colin Keenan's in front to tap it home five hole. And this place, this energy is getting going. This place is going through the roof right now. And just like that, it's a one goal game with 14.05 to go. Second goal of the night for Conlon Keenan. Yeah, Conlon Keenan, four goal, four game goal streak, and just like that, his second of the night. Multiple nights where he's been able to put his uh, put his name on that score sheet, and that's what you love to see out of the assistant captain. As the puck goes over on the far side, Kelb will take a hit, and what a response for Toledo after giving up a goal to make it five to two. They score twice in a row. And they do so, scoring a whopping 22 seconds apart. Three goals in one minute. I think we've been waiting for that excitement to come so far tonight, and it's coming from both sides, but just like that, you can feel the energy, the atmosphere in this arena has completely flipped after that Fort Wayne goal. Now the Walleye are going, and now you want to see them continue with that momentum. They have a 36-21 shot advantage over the Fort Wayne Commons. Now they just need one to tie as Kelb will get across the line. He lost it. Pass comes across and out to center. Dao will back it up for Fort Wayne. As Wedman brings it down the near side wall. He takes a hit, lost his helmet. And he's trying to continue to play the puck. And then he's finally taken down. We get a whistle. We may have a penalty call coming. Now, Webman's down on the ice. He and uh, Jake Willits, I think, were battling down there, Simone. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what the call is. Wedman did not change after he got his helmet taken off, which generally the rule of thumb is that it is a penalty if he doesn't take or if he doesn't exit the ice immediately. But I don't know what they called, whether it was on, or it looks like it's going to be on Willits for roughing. And we'll see if we get a call against Fort Wayne also. We'll sort it out back in a moment. It's a one goal game here in downtown Toledo, 5 4. This is Walleye Hockey. Four game uh, Fort Wayne leading Toledo at 12 49 to go third period Toledo's got a penalty kill though as they'll go on the battery wholesale penalty kill penalty going against Jake Willits. Yeah the 
walleye penalty down there in the defensive zone. Generally, the rule of thumb is if a player's helmet comes off, you have to make the effort to get off of the ice immediately. It did not appear that Wedman necessarily did that, but at the same time, it looked like Willits gave him a little shot to the head there that uh, that took him down to the ice, and just like that, the walleye are going to have to do a good job on this penalty kill. And they start with a Sam Craggs play all the way down the ice. I would say after last night, I would put the puck into Sam Craig's hands every time you're on the penalty kill. <laughs> he does have the hot stick going, that's for sure. Another penalty call coming. It's going to be against Toledo. That's going to be a slash. And Fort Wayne is going to have a five on three. Yeah, the walleye had an opportunity there in that first period on the five on three. And just like that, now the Fort Wayne Comets are going to have one in a one, uh, one goal game here. You can see that slash there right on the side by Conlon Keenan. Unfortunately, now you're going to have a minute 35 of a penalty kill. But you know what? The walleye penalty kill so far, like we said, just over 96% so far this season. They're going to have opportunities to make plays, and they're going to have a chance to block shots and do whatever it takes to keep that puck out of the net. Yeah, it's going to be Matt Anderson who's going to pick up the call. The penalty is going to go against him. And so Toledo shorthanded five on three with a minute 35 on the clock. You can actually, what the linesman's doing right now is he's saying the one that he saw was Conlon Keenan and not Matt Anderson. Meanwhile, I'm not sure if the referee was seeing a secondary slash, but we'll see what they do here. It appears that they're switching which guy it was. Yeah, we'll Anderson's see. out of the box. I think this might be a yep. little bit of false hope for the crowd, unfortunately. Yeah, they're they're thinking, oh, well, it's not going to be a call. Yeah, Conlon Keenan, I guess, is going to be the one. Maybe? I don't know if anyone yep. knows. Yeah. Nope. Well, both, and now Pilon's going over also. All right, so there is more than meets the eye here on the calls. <laughs> have to wait for the uh, announcement. Now Keenan's in the box. Now the question is, why is Pilon yeah. in the box? But nonetheless, what we do know is the walleye have a minute and 34 seconds of a five on three kill. And they got to get after it right away. Another penalty call coming. Going to be against Toledo again. Kelb has it. He'll go across. Shot right on. Left them in the save. Rebound. They score, but they have waved it off right away. No goal. And to say left them and had it for the whistle. Yeah, Moisan was looking for another goal so far this game, but John Lethman doing a good job of covering that puck up. But regardless, now the Walleye are going to have another penalty. Well, Here's the reason why you whistle that down. There's going to be the penalty call that stops the play as soon as Toledo touched it up. And that's why you're the best in the business, Matt. And that is why. But another penalty call going. It's Trenton Bliss going in the box. Yeah, I think the penalty's right there. Yeah. It, on that slash. Yeah, you can see Coach Pat Miss, uh, Mikish definitely wants a, a reasoning as to why they were called again. But just like that, now they're going to have a, an extended five-on-three opportunity. Now you see 119, 145 on the clock as well. But that third penalty is going to start right after. So it's going to be an extended five-on-three here. So Colin Tyson, Adrian Barallo, and Riley McCord are going to start this PK off. And you're just hoping to do everything you can to keep that puck out of the net. Now well, make sure you stop by Frickers before, during, or after the game. Food, fun, sports, and spirits. Frickers as Fort Wayne works with a five-on-three. Good deflection out of play by Adrian Baraldo. Yeah, that's a good stick right there. You can see that uh, Toledo definitely wants to clog those lanes. Fort Wayne is looking for those seam passes, but Coach Alden Hirschfeld always preaches how it's important to have your sticks towards the middle. Block those seam passes because the more you can allow them to walk down and shoot is okay compared to the fact of getting a backdoor opportunity. Face off to the left of John Lethemann. 12 minutes to go, third period. Toledo down one, but they've got four players in the penalty box right now. <laughs> it is a crowded Toledo walleye penalty box. It's a very crowded, it's a little bit of a party in there, you know, but 
If you're the Toledo Walleye, you want to get this penalty killed as quick as possible. Great job there by Colin Tyson to get the puck down the ice. You want to get this killed, and then you want to take that momentum. You're going to have this crowd fired up in this one-goal deficit with about 10 minutes to go. Yeah, very tough to kill off a five-on-three. We'll see if Toledo can do it, especially with extended time. Dugan will throw it down to Sidlowski. They'll switch. Sidlowski goes across to Kelb. Sidlowski trying to go to the front of the net. They'll pass it right through the goal mound. They missed everybody. And Wedman on top of the Riley McCord stick that got a little rise out of the crowd. Set up Kelb. His shot deflected in front. Still won't go. May have went off the post and behind left them in and out. 30 seconds to go in that first penalty. Dugan. Set it in front, let them in a save! And a big time clear! Right to left he goes, and the pad stonewalls Fort Wayne. What a save by John Lethman on that backdoor pass. Fort Wayne finds that seam and gets it all the way through, but John Lethman slides and makes a huge save, and just like that, the walleye were able to clear the puck down the ice. And an offside call will stop the rush for Fort Wayne. Five ticks remaining in the penalty to Jake Willits. Yeah, there's the first opportunity. Great block there by Riley McCourt. Finds that post and it's able to sneak out there, but John Lethman right after makes an incredible save, sliding from his right to his left to make that paddle save and the walleye able to clear that puck out. Now the walleye are gonna have to continue this kill. You have five seconds left on the original penalty to Jake Willits. What they're gonna try to figure out now is how it works with the 31 seconds to Conlon Keenan, as well as what's left of Trenton Bliss's pack. Penalty. Yeah, and uh, Jake Willett's got an extra 10 minute misconduct added in there. That's why you have uh, Darian Pilon in there. That makes sense. So it'll look like in about five seconds, generally what happens here, as long as I remember correctly, is that he will not get to come out after this five seconds here. He'll have to stay in the box. Keenan will able to be able to come out after the 31. Correct. And then after the Bliss penalty finishes, Bliss will be able to come out, and Pilon, who is serving Willits' two, will be able to come out in the next whistle. Yes, that is, you are 100% right. As the puck goes down that far side wall, yep, that first penalty has expired, but the second one is on uh, the one to Trenton Bliss. Now still 15 seconds to go in the Conlon Keenan penalty. He's standing up in the box, ready to come out. Shot is deflected wide. Puck pitch forked up the near side wall. Sam Craggs is the lone forward out there, along with Anderson and Gabriel. Johnson has it. Hands it off, right circle, pass in front. Knocked away Craggs, and he got it out to center with Keenan coming out of the box. Yeah, great job by the walleye to kill that five on three up. You still got a lot of work here with a minute 25 left on the five on four, but that's what you absolutely love to see out of this walleye team. As the pass comes across and a shot, Chase on scores. As he was wide open in the left circle. Toledo scrambling a little bit after the change. And now it's a 6-4 advantage for Fort Wayne. Yeah, the Toledo Walleye aren't happy at the bench right now. There's a little bit of a tie up there with Conlon Keenan as he was going towards the bench. So what ended up happening was as Fort Wayne was able to come into the zone, you can see Lewandowski coming in late because Conlon Keenan was tied up by the Fort Wayne player at the bench, and that's what the coaching staff and the players are not happy about right now. But give credit to Fort Wayne. They come in, they make those seam passes. You go from one side, bring it all the way back to the other side of the ice, and just like that, you're able, as a goaltender, you're trying to slide as quick as possible, but not being able to get back and forth that quickly, especially when you can't see the puck the entire time. And Chason's able to put that right into the back of the net and give Fort Wayne that two-goal cushion once again. Yeah, there you see that Toledo bench. Pat Mickish not happy at all. There's a conversation going on down at the scorer's table. As we're nearing the halfway mark of this third period. And Pat Mickish waiting to get an explanation, I think. I think he is... Nope. Now they're saying five on five here. No, there's not gonna be any penalty calls after the goal. Yeah, the walleye did a tremendous job of killing off that five on three. Unfortunately, that five on four with Fort Wayne with such an extended power play, they were able to get that goal. But if you're the walleye, you gotta take those little victories of build off that five on three. And now you gotta get that next goal. As they bring it in, but an offside call will stop play. 
As Jake Chason got the goal. We got a timeout on the ice. 9.58 to go. Third period. Toledo down 6-4 to four on this Sunday. We'll be back. This is Toledo Bowl Line Hockey. Huntington Center, downtown Toledo. Shots are 38 to 23 in favor of the Toledo Walleye, but they trail it six to four as Fort Wayne has cashed in on their chances. Latest another power play goal. They've scored twice on the man advantage today. As Anderson will throw it off to the far side corner. Haas takes a hit behind the net, peeling away with a puck as Sentaza. He'll lay it up to the blue line. Anderson goes across, Cullen. Left it Hawkins, Hawkins down low, Cullen. Cullen threw it in front and Sentazzo looking for his third. And it was knocked away. Yeah, the walleye, this line's doing a good job right now of generating plays. Sentazzo, I really like the play that he made originally in the corner there, rubbing out the defenseman in order to get that puck back. A lot of times smaller players from that might shy away necessarily because of their skill level, but I love to see him getting into that corner, being physical and generating that puck back. Anderson trying to weave his way in as he goes all the way down to the corner. Puck played up the far side wall. Upended there was Craggs, and we're going to get a whistle as the puck goes into the Toledo walleye bench. Yeah, great skate up there by... Um, by Matt Anderson all the way up the ice there. One thing that the Toledo Walleye have always had is offensive puck moving defensemen. That's one thing that's almost a, a part of their team from Dan Watson all the way from Derek Lalonde and now to coach Pat Mickish. They always look for defensemen that can one, get the puck out on a simple breakout pass, two, that are not afraid to skate up the ice and join that play as a fourth forward. The more opportunities you can get as defensemen to, or as forwards and players to have that defenseman jumping up in the play to help maintain that offensive zone pressure the more you're able to offensively possess the puck Cruz down low along with Craggs as they look to dig it out Cruz will takes a slash along the near side wall managed to peel away from that and takes another penalty call coming gonna be against Fort Wayne that second one is caught Craggs though going down low spun it in front McCourt scores And it's a 6-5 game. We're definitely going to need an explanation here. It appears that the referee, uh, Luke Gagnon, was calling a no goal after the play. Not sure as to what the call was there. It appeared that the puck made it. Sam Craggs made a really nice pass out to the front there, right onto the tape of Riley McCourt who put it right up in the top corner, right in the back of the net. But very curious as to see as to what the explanation we get here is. Yeah, I mean, here's a look back at it. I don't I don't see what the issue is here. Do you? No, I, I don't at all. I mean, it didn't, it, there was no interference with the goaltender by Greasock in front. It looked like the Fort Wayne defenseman ran into him. Uh, the net was on, or it appeared to be on. I don't have an explanation at the moment yeah this is the overhead look is anyone in the crease bothering oh Grease Sox no. got a leg out I mean you can see Johnson run over his own goaltender there which mm. left him laying down there on the ice and McCourt put it right into the back of the net but I'm not sure what uh, what it could be at the moment 
Yeah, Pat Mikish is waiting for that explanation as well. Now they put the puck outside the blue line. There's no way there was an offside in there. There's no and remember there was a delayed penalty coming up, but the four wing comments did not touch the puck in that segment either there. I mean, it immediately went from Brandon Cruz who drew the penalty. It went right onto Sam Craig's stick where he walked down the wall and threw it right up the middle. And so I'm not too sure where. Uh, yeah, is, is it touched where, up at any point there? No. No, right on the and, tape and right in the back of the net. And you got to possess it. I, I don't. It's a very, uh, this is going to be a really interesting call. Yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if Brandon Hawkins is still there listening to an explanation, you know that they're likely not going to call a goal. They've already taken the goal off of the scoreboard, so it's yep. back at 6 4. And if you're a captain there listening to the referee, obviously the referee is explaining what's happening to both captains there, but when the referee is explaining it and you're listening for that long, generally you know it's not going in your favor. The walleye should go on the power play here, but I don't see. There's no power uh, play. You got, it's, you got the right arm up. Luke Gagnon. Okay, so the okay, goal, so the they're being reviewed. They're gonna look at it. All right, that's interesting. See, so they talked about it. The one of them must have had something that they thought was off. Yeah. On this, or that again, like you said, maybe that it was touched up. Yeah, but. It, it didn't appear even from the replay there. I mean, you can see Greasock, who has it on the wall, gives it to Sam Craig, who goes down low, throws it all the way through, all the way up to McCourt, and it goes straight in the back of the net. So at no point was the puck touched. <laughs> the net was on. The goaltender was not interfered by any Toledo player. Um, I guess I don't really have an answer on this one. <laughs> but I think nonetheless, you can see Hawkins talking to Coach Mickish and Coach Brent Bain there. And, Coach Hirschfeld just coming back from the video room. Generally what happens in these situations is that our coaches will go back, watch the video to see what they need to discuss with the referee. They kind of have an idea of what's going to happen before it's even announced in the arena. So even though you get the, the 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 walleye fans waiting in suspense, generally speaking, they kind of already know on the bench whether it's going to be called as a goal or a no goal or a reason as to why there needs to be an argument. And they're they're still taking a look at this. I I don't know, Simone. I I have a hard time understanding what the holdup is here, unless they're trying to see if it. But you still have to have possession, right? Of the ball, it can deflect off yeah. of a player. Yeah, I, a defending player, I and have not a very stop the play. There you go. And now they're going to point at center ice that it is a good goal. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I think it should have been a good goal the whole way along. Um, I'm not really sure as to why there was a, a debate there in the first place. I mean, obviously Fort Wayne's getting an explanation now. I don't think there's anything to argue, um, but it doesn't appear like Fort well, Wayne is arguing too much. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it gave us was a lot of time to talk about it. <laughs> just a chance for everyone on the air to hear our voices just a I little guess, bit more. over and over again. But yes, it is a uh, Toledo goal for Riley McCourt. Yeah, Riley McCord getting that first goal of the season there. Last season he had a number of points, did a really good job on the offensive side. Now he gets his first goal here in his seventh game played and a big goal because just like that, it gets it walleye back within one. 11-39 is the time of the goal. <laughs> and I don't think we had a clock on the delay, but that was quite a delay. That was quite a delay and still absolutely no idea as to why it was reviewed, why it was called off a no goal in the first place. And I believe it appears that Fort Wayne has uh, Moison in the box. I'm not sure if that was the original two minute slash that they were going to call. Um, or if you got a 10, what the case is, but. Yeah, he, he must have gotten, uh, you know, a 10 minute misconduct. Jake Willits is still in the box. Well, I don't know. Maybe you're right. <laughs> There's a lot going on that <laughs> uh, we are clueless at at the moment for a reason. And well, Cruz just came into the box as well. It so, appears we're skating at four on four. Okay, so there's going to be another penalty on the board. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so it says the penalties to number 10 on the walleye, which would not work because there is no number 10. That, that so. is right. So <laughs> uh, they'll fix that. 
but we'll skate four on four now. Yes, we will with a one goal game again. As Hawkins, he'll fly across the line, trying to set it down to the corner to himself, and Bernard took that away. All right, so we got a two and a 10 that went to Moisan. And Riley McCourt. Oh, he got the same thing. So I can, uh, you may have seen it on the replay there. So as Riley McCourt went to celebrate his goal, he skated and celebrated straight towards the Fort Wayne bench. And what happened was that it appeared that Moisan took his stick and kind of gave him a shot from the bench. But it's, uh, well, as Colin yeah. Tyson gets a look to the front of the net and a save by Parks. So safe to say, I would assume that is what drew those penalties, but uh, now the Walleye are going to skate for another minute here, four on four, and try to get that tying up goal. As Sentazzo comes down the near side wall, tried to dance his way towards the front of the net, it got blocked. Beraldo trying to hold it inside the zone. Well, one problem with that on Riley McCord is you've already got Jake Willits in the box. Yes. So now you're down to 4D for the foreseeable future. Yeah, it's going to leave a lot of minutes there for uh, for Grant Gabriel, Adrian Beraldo, Will Cullen, Matt Anderson. You're going to have a lot of minutes here. Another penalty call coming. Uh, Simone as Toledo's going to get their sixth power play of the game. Yeah, that's huge. But like you just mentioned, now you have Riley McCourt who's out with the 10-minute misconduct. So we'll see what the walleye do here as a defenseman in this unit. It looks like it's going to be Will Cullen, who's normally on that secondary unit there. And it looks like he's going to take that role right up at the top here. So 6.45 to go. Well, here's a look at Riley McCourt on his celebration. And then right there. Yeah. He gets the uh, slash from the bench. Hey, just putting on a show, you know? Yeah, you know what? We're, this is an entertainment business. It is, and especially when Fort Wayne and Toledo play, there's always going to be fireworks. Well, this is going to be interesting here. Ten more seconds of the four-on-four four penalties. So it's a four-on-three, but Toledo back in their own zone. They won't get a chance to take uh, advantage of the massively open ice. And it'll be carried up the neutral. Trying to Dump it in, did Bliss, it was blocked. Sentazzo to Cullen, off to Hawkins. He'll flash it over to the far side corner to tie him. First one to it, he'll settle it down, played it in behind the net, and it's ripped up the near side wall and out. Fort Wayne's done a nice job today. Toledo one for five with a man advantage coming into this power play chance. Yeah, minute nine here to go in this power play. The walleye definitely want to create some good opportunities. Get that PP goal, get that tying goal, and get this place rocking. As Bliss sets it for Hawkins. In front it goes to Tayev. Just couldn't settle it down. It popped off of him and went behind the net. It's set up by Hawkins as it's worked for over in the corner. Flashed it to Tayev. Up to the line it goes and over to Hawkins. He'll fire a shot. I was looking for a Bliss tip and it missed. It was right at the side of the net, Trenton Bliss. He'll try to dig it out again. Behind the net it goes. To Taya, scoops it up to the line, 30 to go in the man advantage. Cullen, able to just keep it alive. It nearly hopped away from him. And it does hop away from Lewandowski, and it sent the length. Now you're going to see Grant Gabriel come out in that place there of Will Cullen, who has moved up to that quote-unquote 1A unit. As Greasock carries through the neutral zone. Ahead, Tyson to Greasock, sent it towards the front of the net. Cruz, it got knocked away and cleared out. And Fort Wayne has killed off that power play chance. Toledo one for six with a man advantage. Under five minutes to go here on home ice. Got to pick up the energy here. Got to get some opportunities, get this crowd rocking. They have a 38-24 shot advantage over the Fort Wayne Comets. They trail the game, though, six to five as it's lifted out. This will go all the way down, but not far enough for icing, so Gabriel has to play it. And he'll leave it for Matt Anderson. A little over four minutes left to go. In the third period, regulation time. Wall, I need one to tie. Tyson slides past the Kelb check, plays it in behind the net, over to the far side wall. Beraldo stepping up to hold it in. Pilon trying to help out. Darian Pilon trying to dig it loose in behind the net. He will, 
Keeps it alive. Second effort, though, for Fort Wayne. They'll keep it going up the near side wall. Craggs takes an elbow as he bounces in there, trying to play the puck. 3.40 to go. Comes to Anderson. Over to Baraldo. He's open, trying to pass it again. And it was a little bit behind Keenan. Near side, Craggs. Left it, Keenan. Had it chopped off of his sticking out. Like Under three and a half to go. Like we talked about, the walleye in a position right now with only four defensemen. So you got to almost maintain some of that energy. You're missing guys like McCourt and Willits who can provide a little bit more offensive play. But they got to do everything they can to get that puck north and create time in the offensive zone. Santazo played it behind the net. And Fort Wayne trying to clear it out. It deflects up and out of play. Timeout on the ice, 3.05 to go here, third period. It's 6-5, Fort Wayne. Don't go anywhere. We got the finish coming up next. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey. I still wonder why they... I have no idea. For... Three oh five left, regulation time. Thirty-eight twenty-four on our forest view shots on goal counter. Toledo has had the edge in that regard. It is they've done everything they could. I mean you've scored five times today. Yeah, you've it's, scored five goals, you got thirty-eight shots. This is pretty indicative of the way Toledo's played against Fort Wayne this season. They score a lot of goals, they get a lot of shots. But just like that, you're still down one goal with just three minutes to play. You got to think with the way, generally speaking, when you're looking down at these last few minutes, you're going to see Fort Wayne do a lot of simple things like chip the puck to the neutral zone. They know they're in a position where they don't need to score a goal, so they're not necessarily looking to get that offensive zone rush. They're just trying to look to get that puck out and kill time. As Santazo with a hit over on the far side wall. Puck stays inside the zone. Bliss going behind the net. Trying to wrap it in front, he does. It's chipped up towards the line and poked out. Vulcan will chase after it. Cullen back after to watch him. Centering pass, deflected away. And that's what you're talking about. Now, in that situation, they go because you have a good look. Yep, Right, exactly. but otherwise, you're just going to keep it simple the exactly. rest of the way. Exactly. You don't want to get caught down. If you're the defensive team who has the lead, you don't want to get caught in a situation where you're going all the way down the ice and getting a player caught behind the play, and now you're giving up an odd man rush. In that situation, when you have an opportunity to score, of course you go for it, but generally speaking, you'll see a lot of soft chips into the neutral zone to avoid the icings, but gives enough time where either the defensive players can change or they're just killing time so that they can have all five guys prepared in that neutral zone for the next rush. 2.37 to go. It's the first time Toledo has been in this situation. They tied it early enough in Kalamazoo where they didn't have to pull the netminder. So we'll see uh, how Pat Mickish plays this. If they need to look at pulling John Lethem into the bench for the extra skater. It's worked around far side. Conlon Keenan trying to hold it up along the wall. It's punched out. And Beraldo will have to race it down for the walleye. Yeah, once again, these walleye defensemen playing with just four of them for the last four minutes here. You know they got to be tired at the end of a three and three, but they got to give everything they have here for these last two minutes. As the play, knocked down Gorniak. He'll get it to Adau. He'll take it down low. Tyson watching him. Baraldo comes in with a hit. You can see, just like we talked about, this is a situation where the Fort Wayne player wants to kill as much time as possible. He's going to hold that puck as long as he can, and as soon as that puck gets loose, he's got to get back as quick as possible to not let up an odd man rush. And Adrian Baraldo has the puck. 
95 seconds left here in the third period. Toledo down one, six to five. You gotta Four. think, as soon as the walleye are able to get this puck up ice, you can see Coach Brent Baines waiting to call John Lethman to come, and as soon as they get up ice, you gotta think he's gonna come. Hawkins to the red line. He'll drive it in. Lethman going to the bench. Extra skater coming on for the walleye. As it's worked up the near side wall, Hawkins a shot. He blistered that one to the front of the net, but a save by Parks. Puck goes behind the cage, Grease Sock. Backhand pass gets to Hawkins, minute left. Cullen sends it across, Santanzo off to Hawkins. Down low it goes, Cruz sent it in front, Grease Sock a try, and that was broken up. And it's cleared all the way down, icing called against Fort Wayne. Cool, that was a close one there in front. Really, really nice play to get that puck there over to Greesock. Really, really nice save there by Tyler Parks. Walleye doing a good job finding those seams. We can see Cruz just gets that puck in front. Greesock just tries to get to that far side, but give credit to Tyler Parks. A great save and shot number 39, and now the Walleye take a timeout here with 49 seconds to go. Yep, want to set up what they want to do offensively. Assistant coach Brent Bain drawing that up. Like we talked about, this is a situation where you're missing your, you know, your first power play defense in, that you would normally necessarily have out there in Riley McCourt. Gives guys like Will Cullen an opportunity to make plays in this situation. You know you're going to see guys like Brandon Hawkins, Oren Santazzo, uh, Trenton Bliss. You know you're going to see these guys in this situation here. Now the Walleye are going to have to do everything they can to get that puck towards that net. The positive part is with 49.7 seconds, you don't have to rush it. You have the ability to set plays up. You have the ability to take the time and then use that patience to kind of move the puck around and find that right shot that you want. And when you do, you're going to look at three to four guys crashing that net while you have one guy potentially on the side to get the rebound and one staying up top as a defenseman. And it'll start with Trent Bliss to take the draw. And the puck is down. It's in the circle, squibs free. And Johnson able to play it out. That's heading towards the empty net, but it'll go wide. No icing, though. So that'll mean Cullen will have to play it and play it quickly. Down to the last 30 seconds. Hand it off for Tyson. He'll send it down into the near side corner. It's played up the wall. Knocked down Cullen. He'll go rink wide. Hawkins fires to the front of the net. That's blocked, and it's cleared away. Wedman will get it out to center ice. He's looking for the empty net. He sends it wide, but just 15 seconds left. Linden going to try to hold it up. Santazo played it behind his own net. It's going to take a heavy rush up the ice, but no, Linden's going to tie it up long enough that the clock is going to run out on Toledo as the horn sounds. And this one goes to the Fort Wayne Comets as Toledo suffers their first defeat of the season in regulation time. What a game, 6-5 your final. The Fort Wayne Comets win it. We'll have our post game show coming up in just a moment. Stay with us from here at the Huntington Center. This is Toledo Walleye Hockey.